Are you ready for the weekend? Weekends on UME Radio. Get the UME Radio app. Weekends on UME Radio. The sun is up and so are we. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook, all at UME Radio. UME Radio. Positive entertainment 24-7. Subscribe on YouTube and click the notification bell. Entertainment now on UME Radio, WUME DB New York. This show takes you beyond the music, dance, box office and thrills. For deeper and more meaningful insights into the minds and hearts of the players. We share stories about pop culture, celebrities, and everything entertainment, but with education and empowerment in mind. It's all about positive entertainment. Here is today's hot topic. Tandy Newton gets emotional while apologizing to dark-skinned black women for what she called taking their men, taking their work, taking their truths. But the black community's response seems to be one of aloofness. Many online are asking, what is the purpose of this? Where did this come from, and what warranted these tears over colorism when she didn't communicate an intention to do something about it? In her interview, she stated that her light-skinnedness has been way more problematic than being, quote unquote black. So, is this compassion for the colorism that dark-skinned women have had to endure, or is this Newton holding dark-skinned women accountable for what she called her problematic light-skinnedness? Here's a clip from her interview. I've wanted so desperately to apologize every day to, to, to darker-skinned actresses, to say I'm sorry that I'm choked, I'm the one chosen. My mama looks like you. It's been very painful to have women that look like my mum feel like I'm not representing them, that I'm taking from them, taking their men, taking their work, taking their truth. My light skinness has been more problematic than being black, is being light skinned, has been way more problematic than being black. We'd like to share some of the comments online. YouTube ELEF wrote, I'm mixed race, and I find this apology so disingenuous and quite frankly insulting. Darker skinned black female actresses certainly do not feel threatened by Tandy Newton or her career. She needs to get a clue. Another YouTuber, Tasha Tot wrote, Perfect example of you don't always have to say what's on your mind out loud. A third YouTuber, Leo Williams writes, and she said, taking their men. She is married to a whole white man. This is insane. YouTuber number four, Joan Ace writes. She was not attacking anyone. However, she put up a mirror for dark-skinned women to see how their anger and comments and bullying have messed her up so bad, she is having guilt over things she can't be blamed for. Don't be a hypocrite. I have lived her truth and it never ends. I am glad I am stronger now. Everything is, it's because you are light-skinned or mixed. Another YouTuber, Rachel M. I feel sorry for her. I think it's obvious that somebody complained to her that she was taking up space that didn't belong to her and she thought that that person's feelings were everybody else's thoughts. Saying this to a therapist would be better. Not everything needs to be on the internet slash public. And, finally, YouTuber, Salma al Shamali shares. What in the Black History Month? Tandy she should have saved this for her therapist and memoir. She needs to have several seats. Whoopi Goldberg apologized. Punishing her further is un-Jewish. That is the headline to an opinion article by Nathan Hirsch, a writer, and the former managing director, of the social justice nonprofit Partners for Progressive Israel, published on February 9th. The article reads, in the first two paragraphs. When Whoopi Goldberg said on her television program, The View, that the Nazi genocide of European Jews was not about race, but was actually about man's cruelty to man, she showed a flawed understanding of race and of the Holocaust, and offended just about every Jewish organization and Jewish individual I know. But ABC's decision to suspend her from The View for two weeks, after she apologized, is equally troubling. Silencing people for ignorance and a misunderstanding of anti-Semitism is largely unhelpful and is, at its core, un-Jewish, 
Jewish tradition emphasizes the acceptance and importance of apology. Whoopi Goldberg, co-host of ABC's The View, set off a firestorm when she insisted on January 31st that the Holocaust was not about race. Hands outstretched, she went on to describe the genocide as a conflict between two white groups of people. Goldberg apologized but was still handed down a punishment of suspension. The question I ask is this, do black people receive harsher punishments for mistakes, their opinions, and stance, more than other people in the media and Hollywood? And, as a community, do we acknowledge this vulnerability for what it is, regardless of achievements and positions? Do you recall The View co-host's scolding of Oscar winner, Monique, when the actress was a guest on her show, warning her that she could have schooled her had she called? Because what happens is, our finish line keeps changing. And when I say that, Whoopi, as a black woman in Hollywood, see, if initially you're told, build up your resume, and that's what'll get the money. Then you build up your resume, and then they'll say, well, you know what, we see the resume, but we'll get them the next time. All right. And you never meet your next time. Right. So when it comes to Netflix, and with Amy Schumer and Dave Chappelle and, and Chris Rock, and let me say this, what they got, they were supposed to. Mm -hmm. I don't have an issue with my sister Amy, mm -hmm. nor my brother Dave and Chris. Mm -hmm. But when the vice president of Netflix says to my husband and our attorney, by the way, Monique is a legend too. Uh -huh. Well, if I'm a legend, why wouldn't I get what the legends are getting? I'm gonna stop. You. Okay. Because contractually, yes. when you make a movie, regardless of who you sign the deal with, yes. your job, mm -hmm is to go and promote said movie. Yes. That's, that's, I, no, 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 don't applaud. So when they wanted you to come, and I, we've had this conversation. Yes, mm -hmm. And I said, if you had called me, mm -hmm. I could have schooled you mm -hmm. on what was expected. And when we did have that conversation and what I said to you, mm -hmm. my sweet sister, I said, Whoopi, at what point do we stop saying the next time? Because what, what was expected? Well, well, wait, wait, but I want to answer it though. Yeah. I want to answer when you say you contractual. You want to get paid for the publicity? Uh, to do the publicity? Yes, yeah. ma'am. Because if I had done something wrong contractually, they would have sued me. The reason why no one could do anything to me contractually because they found out I did nothing wrong contractually. So when they asked me to come overseas mm -hmm. to promote the film. Mm -hmm. When, the, when I said, guys, I'm spending time with my family, I'm going to pass. Mm -hmm. Now, when I make this statement, this is what happens when you don't go to the room. Mm -hmm. What Tyler Perry showed me, Lee Daniels, mm -hmm. Oprah Winfrey, and Lionsgate, when you don't do what we ask you to do, yeah. we'll take your livelihood. So for eight years, for eight years, my family has suffered and my career has suffered because what I would not allow those entities to do was bully me. And because I didn't allow the bullying to happen, this is now what I sit in. Okay. Now, we believe that was said with good intentions, but we cannot pretend that Monique's words aren't ringing true in this situation. Is it that black people do not accept the troubling state in which we continually find ourselves at the hands of those who wield power over Many are sobering up to Monique's criticism of the system. And some had this to say. YouTuber, bribe comments. Monique was right all along, from Netflix to Lee Daniels, and she took all the bullets aimed at Dave Chappelle and Whoopi Goldberg right now. YouTuber, Barbara Fontaine writes, As a woman of no color, I have a tremendous amount of admiration and respect for Monique. She is a woman deserving of great respect for her ability and inner strength to not be owned. She values her freedom in so many aspects. I would want my children, especially daughters, to mirror her. I wish I could say the same for Whoopi. Whoopi's time out is the least she should be given if considering the plight of others in similar situations. Whoopi's discipline issue is not a racial issue. It's just how the rich and powerful conduct business. It's done to all those in a lesser position of employment, no matter the color of your skin. Wake up. Stop helping the rich and powerful, who are using racism as a platform to divide, distract, and weaken us all, or we will continue until we have destroyed each other. It's plain and simple, black and white, but it is not a black and white issue. Just my view. Bless you all. And YouTuber, Atia Deduxon shares. Monique stay calling it. Called it with Steve Harvey, now Whoopi. We do as a people need to have our own. And we need to stand together and support each other more in public. 
That is it for today's Hot Topics. It's time for our interview special. Celebrating Black Artistry Artist to Artist Here's today's special guest. Nigerian Christian contemporary and gospel singer, songwriter, and sensational music minister, Omalala Owe, better known as Lola, renowned for her exceptionally lyrical content, releases a brand new single titled, My Year, produced by Boda Falabi. She kick-started her music career with the release of her new single, My Year, now available on all digital streaming platforms. My Year is a New Year anthem to speak our New Year hopes and aspirations into existence. It is a song of prayer and confession to usher us into a new era or new year, believing God that the new year shall be brimming with celebrations, promotions, all the great things we desire, and so much more. Lola joins Jody and JB McFarland to tell us more. Jody Ann is also a gospel artist who recently released her first single, My Soul Says Yes. Her music is also available on all digital platforms. All contact details will be provided in the description section.
And I am also a singer and songwriter. Thank you for staying with us on Entertainment Now. Thank you. Thanks for joining us in studio. All right. So now joining us in studio is Lola. So we're going to come face to face, artist to artist. How are you doing? I just want to say thank you for that thank song because you. that is exactly how I'm feeling for this year. Okay. <laughs> That's great. That's exactly great. how I'm feeling. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing fine. I'm so excited to be here on your show this uh, morning. Thank you so yes. much for having me. I'm, I'm super excited. excited. <laughs> yes. I'm excited to have you. I'm so excited to have you. How are you doing? Yeah, how doing. are you doing? Are you hearing me clearly? I can hear you now. Yes, yes. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you too? I'm so excited to be here on your show. I'm excited <laughs> to have you. Thank I'm you. I'm so excited Thank to you. have you. So Thank tell you. Me, tell me about this song because I really, really, really and truly love this song. It's how I'm feeling in this season. It's a new year and yeah. you know, celebrating and just putting back some stuff. When I say exactly oh, how the song is, so, so um, just okay. tell me how. Who, who inspired you to write this song for, for this year? Because this is, this is like a puzzle fitting in this year. You hear me, Lola? Okay, I lost your beat, but I'm, I can hear you now. Okay, so you want me to repeat the question for you? You want to know what how I came about a song, my year, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. So, right. Uh, thank you. My year, it's more like four months old now. Mm -hmm. I think when I got inspiration, I would say um, 6th of November is my birthday. So mm -hmm. last year, uh, 6th, um, like a few weeks to my birthday. And I was just, you know, in that space where you're kind of reminiscing on your, on what you have gone through on how much you're doing, you know, and thinking about your future. So um, my year came to me mm -hmm. as a, a, a prayer. These are kind of, the lyrics are more like the prayers that I pray for my new era, the new year. So I just thought, let me put this into, into singing. So I decided mm -hmm. to, you know, go to the studio and mm -hmm. make the song. And I thought also it could be good for me to release uh, the first of December struck the new year. People are going to love yes. it. It's a new year. Everybody wants, you know, new aspirations and new goals. So these are songs, you know, these are confessions, you know, calling in, into existence the things that we hope for. You know, we, we believe in God that all those things will come true, that this year is going to be my year of celebration. This year is going to be my year of jubilation. That this year is gonna be my year of recognition, and that's why I'm here. I, I know now we know each other, so you're beginning to know me now, and I'm gonna do more by God's grace, which you're gonna know more of me. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so so basically that that part, the chorus is the that's your favorite part of the song. Yeah, that's my favorite part as well. <laughs> that's your favorite part. You know, that's my yeah, favorite that's part. Favorite yeah, <laughs> and as yeah. I said, it just fits. It fits in. So perfectly, it fits in so perfectly in this year. I'm so I I really the first time I heard this song, I'm like this. I'm taking this song. Yes, yes, I'm taking this song. I'm taking this song. All right. So 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 tell me. I know I, I lost you. Your first, I lost me. you for a, I lost you, you for lost a minute. Me? Yes. Okay. Yes. You clearly so, know. What did you say just now? Right. So I was asking you. Right? Okay. I know it's not the first, your first song, right? So no. how many songs have you written? Okay. Um, 
I have uh, done like five songs, but mm -hmm. I have put just two on the streaming platforms for people to listen to. Uh, those other ones are more like, you know, I was taking it as a side thing, like a hobby. Then you go to the studio, you then I release those songs, but they are not on the streaming platforms. But I have two songs now on the release uh, on the streaming platforms, and there are still gonna be more. Like yesterday, now I was in the studio to do another song, which will be coming out. Uh, first week of next month, March. Mm -hmm. So now I have two songs on all the streaming platforms and expect more, more. Like I'm going to be giving it to you back to back. Uh, great, great. So Lola, what are, what are your posture that you have when you're writing? Because you're a writer, right? Yeah. Do you like writing in the living room, in your bathroom, in the bedroom? Okay. How, you know, how the lyrics flow? How does it flow for you? You hearing me, Lola? Hello? Yes, you're hearing me? Okay. Yeah, you're back now. Okay. okay I'm back. Okay. So, okay. Uh, go ahead. Okay, do you want to do something? Let me, I, I think I get your question. Okay. I was able to speak there, yeah. So, um, I would say every uh, gift, um, good gift and perfect gift is from God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and I cannot rule out the role of the Holy Spirit in my in my writing process. So basically, my inspiration is from Holy Spirit. Uh, but then, um, when I write, it comes to me anywhere. You know, I write um, from. I get inspiration from my surroundings, my environment. I get inspiration from experiences, my past experiences. And sometimes it it comes to me as if I'm hearing a sound or a word repeated repeatedly in my head, you know? So that's where my um, smartphone voice recorder comes in handy. So I pick to document so I won't forget. You know, it comes, I just, anywhere. I could be in the car, I could be in the kitchen. But when that thing keeps coming to me, I know I have to just pick my phone Record mm -hmm. this so I don't get to forget. Then I research and develop it. So that's more like how I get my inspiration and how I write. Yeah. Okay. So Lola, what yes. would you say to someone that, you know, it, they think that they are writing and they write songs, but mm -hmm. to them, it seems like it makes no sense. Like, you know, I write this, it don't sound, it sounds, you know, foolish. What would you say to that person? You hear me, Lola? I think I lost her. Lola? I'm here. I'm here with you. Yes. But I didn't get that. I think I lost okay. you. you. Okay. You lost me? All right. You're hearing me clearly now? I can hear you clearly now. All right. So what would you say to okay. someone, a person who writes songs, okay. but don't feel proud enough of what they, they have been writing, right? Okay. I think it's really foolish and it sounds, you know, stupid. What would you say to that person that has that insecurity about what they have written? Okay, I think you're back now. Yes, you heard me? Okay, okay. Okay. I think it's I think, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. I'm hearing you. Okay, I think I was once like that person. You know, I have been taking my um, writing, mm -hmm. or let me say the gift of writing and singing as a hobby. Sometimes I will write, I'll be like, I'm not sure of this song. And I'll sing it to the first person that I sing my song to most of the time is my husband. I was singing to him, he would tell me, this is great. But that thing would keep telling me, this is great. This is your gift, you have to use it. You know, God has given you this gift and the only way you can give back to God is by using it. You can't uh, go and bury your gift. So sometimes you think you're not enough, but I tell you, you are enough. So whoever is listening and is in that space where you're thinking maybe your, your content is not good enough, I want to tell you, your content is good enough. Just get a friend. 
sing it to a friend. Okay, I have this song. Can you list? Okay, sing the song to a friend. Get the uh, uh, the review. What uh, the comments of what a person will tell you. I'm telling you, you're gonna fly. Then you. And another thing is, you know your purpose. Be sure you know your purpose. If this is what you really want to do, then you go for it. You go for it. Nothing should stop you. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for that. So um, where in Nigeria are you from? Okay, I'm from Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, I've heard about yes. that. Yes. I've heard about Have you been to Lagos? Lagos? Have you been to Nigeria? Nigeria? <laughs> no, I've heard about. I watch it. I watch movies with Lagos and and oh, okay, and yes, but it's a great place to visit. Yes. Yeah, it is. It is. I think um, I just saw a question came up on. All right, so we have a lot of comments coming in. Yes, we have a lot of comments coming. What has I'm not seeing? Hold on, let me see if I can widen the screen. All right. All right. So then we love in the song. So then we are really love in the song. Yes, we are really love it because I really. I believe in you. All right, Tandola. Give us a little piece of the song. You say? Yes, I want you to give us a thing. Um, just a little piece of the song for us. Just a little. Piece okay, I should sing us. along with it. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Is it gonna play? Are they gonna play it at the background? No, it's not. No, it's not gonna play. Watch, just sing. Yeah, just sing it for us. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe your word. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe your word. I believe in you. Ever faithful, ever loving Father. Your plans for me are good. You said I'll be there, never to tell. Oh, you shine your light on me. I will live, I know good die. Oh, your love for me is true. This is my year, my year of celebration. Oh, this is my year, my year. Jubilation, oh, this is my year. Ever faithful, ever loving father. Your plan for me, I do. You said I'll be there, never to tell. You shall be all right on me. I will leave, I know the joy.
ready for the weekend. Weekends on UME Radio. Get the UME Radio app. Weekends on UME Radio. The sun is up and so are we. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook, all at UME Radio. UME Radio. Positive entertainment 24-7. Subscribe on YouTube and click the notification bell. Get fit. Mind, body, and soul. With pro athlete, impact speaker, and performance coach, DeAndre Borrell. Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. Get fit, mind, body, and soul. With pro athlete, impact speaker, and performance coach, DeAndre Borrell. Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. Just want to say thank you. Thank you all viewers that are here today, this morning. Very grateful for you all. Uh, man, it's a blessing. I hope that you are blessed today. And um, you're sharing this and uh, telling your friends about it. But this is going to be amazing. I do have a special guest. So very grateful uh, for the day. Uh, my name is DeAndre Burrell. This is Get Fit Mind, Body, and Soul. And I am an entrepreneur, an impact speaker, a former NFL player, uh, NFL PA member. I'm a board member for the Minority Psychology Network. And I own a performance health and wellness business called Create Elite LLC, right? We're one with the creator and, uh, you know, just very grateful and thankful for that. So just with the show, we're here to reach minority communities, the youth, uh, women, men to inspire, motivate, educate them on uh physical fitness, mental fitness, uh, spiritual fitness, uh, through demonstrations, through topics, uh, sports topics, hot topics and commentaries on sports and uh, just just bringing that life and joy to empower those to be able to create and live the lifestyle that they've intended to live. So very grateful for that. Uh, we're just here to make an impact. So thank you for being here today. I uh, just want to start off with my uh, daily daily verse and prayer. So my verse is Romans 12 and 12, and it says, be joyful in hope, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. So I just want to say thank you all today. Thank you, God, for uh waking us up this morning, putting us in our right minds, giving us the ability and for having this show and the viewers protect us all, keep our minds focused and to have a blessed day. So today, you know, I want to talk about how you balance being an athlete and an artist, right? And um, mm -hmm. man, it's amazing. My guest hey. right here, Paris Celestine, he is an up and coming artist. Look at he got a big smile on his face, right? Up and coming artist, and he's an athlete, right? He's into fitness. Um, man, he's just an amazing man. He's a man of God, number one. So, uh, tell us about yourself uh, right now. Where you're from? Uh, where you're living right now? And currently doing? Um, <clears throat> well, currently it's uh, five thirty four in the morning, a.m. California. Uh, specific time. I'm up. I'm early. I'm up at it. Um, haven't been to sleep <clears throat> long. Um, it's been a long day, but shoot, I actually got some fitness in the day. And like DeAndre said, and I am a man of God. That's how me and DeAndre actually met. We met in church back in, oof, it's been a minute. I want to say we met back in 
When was that, DeAndre? That was like 2000. About 2016. 2000, yeah, 2000. Yeah, right before that, 2015, 2016, 15, 16, we met yeah. at church. Uh, I was 15, 16. Uh, DeAndre at the time was 26, turning 27. So since that time, me and DeAndre have been together and we have grown to know each other throughout church and just as an individual. <laughs> So it's always been a, a big brother, and, you know, a little brother kind of, you know, relationship and mentorship. So that's our relationship that we have with each other. <clears throat> and that's who I really started my fitness journey with um, back in 2018. That's when I really decided to start to start to get serious with the fitness journey and playing football. And that's really who I want to say, you know, taught me a lot and taught me most of what I know for football and getting me prepared for where I am and, you know, who I am today as well. So he's a, a part of that. So um, thank you a lot for that too as well. So, you know, it's yeah. crazy, yeah. like, w from where I came from. So, <clears throat> so Man, I've never played, I never played football and, DeAndre gave me that opportunity to, you know, express myself and to be able to, you know, leave room for error and to be able to, you know, want to, you know, create that <laughs> mark for myself to be higher in, like, you know, fitness and spiritually. So that was the the part for me spiritually as well. So just having that brother in Christ to always hold you accountable. So that was that still is a blessing to this day. So that's why I'm here. And yeah, you know, so. man, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that, bro. Um, man, I know God is working. Um, I know you were talking about, um, how I helped you start your fitness journey. Uh, let's talk about, uh, it reminds me of the day you called me. So tell, tell, tell the viewers why, you did start your fitness journey, not just because of me, you know, but there was another particular reason why you wanted to start your fitness journey. And I remember that day you called me. So just let the viewers know and let the people know what was going on and what you thought was happening in that moment in time. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah. Um, what was that? Oh, the, uh, what, the Hawaii trip? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So um, I went to a trip in 2018, and this was January, literally early January, the first week of January. And me and my friends, we were at work. We decided to take a trip to Hawaii. And during that time, 2018, um, Korea, I think at this time, yeah, South, was it North? North or South Korea, they sent the... Uh, uh, alert saying that it uh, they were sending the missiles. So at that time, everybody was like, "Take shelter," and all this. So and it was and it was crazy because it was like, ah, she was like, literally, we just came over here on vacation, and it was like, it made me think. It was like, well, I haven't did what I really wanted to do. Like, if, like if I could think about it right now, did I really give a hundred and ten percent? And I thought to myself, I was like, no, I did not give a hundred and ten percent of what I wanted to do in life. So when that happened at that time and moment, like I really was frozen, I was stuck. And I said, if I do ever get another chance to do what I want to do and do what I love and what I have a passion for, then I'll do that. And, you know, we sat there for the 30 minutes that it was going on for, and then we get the alert, you know, like 40 minutes later saying that it was a false alarm. So I'm like, yeah, when I, when I get back home, like it's a wrap, like I'm finna, Literally, I said, I said, I'm finna, I'm finna get right. I didn't say I was finna link with DeAndre and do this and do that. I'm just like, all right, when I get back, I'm going to commit to being the best me I can be and being the best football player I can be and, you know, really locking down in that. And when I got back, like, that's just what happened. It wasn't even, like, as soon as I said it, it was manifested right there in that second and that thought and, like, that when I had it. It was manifesting because as soon as I got back, literally, it was just like a, like a trigger, like a switch. Because we got, I got back to California, and the next morning, we were at it in the morning, yeah. like working out three times a day, and and that's when I started to see the change in my body. 
because I was so committed and so determined. I was waking up at 5, 6 in the morning, and I would work out with DeAndre, get dropped off at school, get picked up back by DeAndre, go to go to go to another school to work out and we you know playing football and i'm working out separate i'm doing three a days two a days like literally going for it every day so you know stretching and you know literally reaching for the stars doing stuff that i've never done before in the weight room you know <laughs> being flexible you know learning about hips and you know literally stuff that i've never done before and you know deandre is there to help and I could say if I wanted to go, you know, for a personal trainer certificate right now, I could go do that right now. And that's because of everything that I've learned from DeAndre. And that's that creative lead and that, you know, just that mentality. So, and that hunger for everything. I appreciate that, bro. Like, that's amazing that, you know, a, a life experience that you didn't know, you know, it, it made that switch that light switch in your mind like you know what i need to to uh-huh. do the things i need to do to get better in my life and um you know a part of it was your fitness journey your health because you're like wait a minute this is not the end of me and um that's a blessing bro that's really a blessing and um it's just amazing so let's 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 talk about just a little bit you know what was your desire to play football like, why did you want to do it? What did you see in yourself um, in wanting to be an athlete? What was your vision? Like, how did you feel when you first started? And, you know, what, what was your thought process, like your confidence? Uh, yeah, so in the beginning, I've, uh, I've always felt drawn to football. Um, you know, or you already know my background for the other people who don't know. I've never really had the grades to play football as well. So when I first started playing football, it was my senior year. So I first really got that real hunger. Like when I first started, when I was playing D-tackle at Freedom, I got that real hunger when I first like got in the game. And I fell down just due to the grades again and I ended up getting kicked off, but that wasn't the end of my story. Um, I ended up going to DVC and, you know, I gray shirted, you know, practice and I practiced. And then when I did finally come back and tried to, uh, or did play 2018 running back at DVC, I played against Laney at towards the end and I had more yards than the, you know, the starting running back. So it was that moment in time where I knew that like, this is it, like, this is where I'm going to be great at. And that was the last time I played, and that was the first time I played. And so I uh, ended up transferring after that, after 2019 into Laney. And so, uh, and that's when COVID came around, and that's when I ended up dropping out of the uh, the school. But the passion has always been there. And once I did get finally get that that field opportunity, that's when it uh, that's when it really clicked me putting it in motion and me hearing that whistle and hearing that like, you know, yeah, it's just something about being on that field that, you know, you know how it is, man, being an athlete and just that feeling. For sure. How you supposed like you supposed to be there. And then you know how you know you get that feeling when you know you're not supposed to be there. Like when you had a different job or, you know, when you just like, man, I'm I know where I'm supposed to be and this is not it. But, you know, right. when you're on that field or, you know, in your – where you're supposed to be, you're like, man, this feels perfect. Or, you know, or you get that right, certain man. feeling like this is this is it. So, hey, man, man. Yeah, uh, definitely. I haven't definitely. had that feeling yet back again. Um, like I said, we – you know, we're getting ready for – to be ready, so. Hey, man, it's, it's happening, bro. Don't even – don't yeah. even – don't even already know how God works. So we have a question – for you entrepreneurs aloud says how have you found doing music and sports and why did you decide to do both well i'm not gonna lie at first i really struggled with the thought of like okay well am i really able to do both because it's like you look into the music industry 
you look into the sports industry and it's like, who do you really see? Who do you really see doing both? Right. Like especially with fo- especially with football. Like, who do you see doing both? Like music, musically, and you know, talentedly, football. Like you have A. B. You know, he plays around with the music and stuff. Le'Veon Bell, but like, no, like seriously, like I mean, I get, I, I mean, I would say they probably take it seriously, but like, on a real level, like, you know, putting it on at all platforms. Beside that, like, you know, reaching to the people through their music and you know things like that. Uh, I don't, I don't see it. And I still struggle with, you know, trying to balance it out and, you know, pick one. Because some days I want to, you know, play football more than, you know, I want to do music. And then some days I want to do music, more, you know, more than I want to play football just because that's just the, like, the moment that I am, that I'm in. Just because, I don't know, like, I really move by music, but at the same time, I'm fit every day. Like I get active almost every day. I mean, we almost active every day anyway, just by walking, standing up, just doing regular things. So <laughs> when I'm when I'm walking and doing certain things, like you know, certain movements, it's like, oh damn, like <laughs> um, you know, it gets me in that football mode. Like okay, I gotta go do this. So um, it is a challenge. Um, it's not not possible. Nothing's impossible. You could do everything that you want to do all at once. Right. You just gotta figure out how to do it, and you know what's your why for doing it. So it like so if you want to, if you want to do it, you can do it. What's for you is for you. So that's the truth. Anything you put your mind to, anything you believe in, and God gives you the desires of your heart. Satin Brownie, she asks, which is more important to you, music or being an artist? I know you kind of dove into that a little bit about, you know, some days you want to um, do football more. Some days you want to do music more. She has another question. What similarities do you find with both being an Um, artist and an athlete? That's a good question. Similarities. um, I find like similarities is like, like you literally get to be, creative and whatever you want to do like even on the field there's certain rules that you have to follow but it's still you it's still you and that's what makes it still unique because not everybody plays football the sound the same and not everybody makes music the same and music gives you that opportunity to express who you are on football you on the football field you get to do the same exact thing you get to take out your feelings you get to show people, you know, who, who you really are through, you know, through physical activity, through music, through vocals, you know, different words. And and it's be, being a leader, too. Like, being a leader, like, you just, like, for me, I'm naturally a leader. People are naturally drawn to me. I'm likable. And, you know, they want to listen. They want to, you know, give it a try. You know, if I say hustle, they going to hustle, you know, just off, of, just off of the strength and, the, you know, the words and everybody else, you know, flowing. Um, and then, you know, even with the music, uh, like I said, with the music is, it's just there, it's there. So, yeah. Sure, man. And, that's and a, it's that's a feeling a, and it's all, and it's all a feeling. Everybody a gets blessing. that feel. So. That's a blessing, bro. You got Jacqueline Doyle saying, amen, amen. And, um, uh, man, entrepreneurs allowed. Her next question. She has another question. She's saying, what's your advice to an athlete who wants to do both? That's a, that's a great both. question. Do, man, yeah. do both. And no matter what, keep going. Like, I, I have work, too. I work full time. I get busy a lot. I'm tired a lot. But, uh, you know, I still find time to do what I still love. And, you know, on my off days, I'm in the gym. I'm getting ready to be, you know, so I ain't got to be ready, you know, because like I said, if there's a bad opportunity and the football does come back and they give me the opportunity to play somewhere, I'll be ready, um, you know, because it is possible. Like I said, you could do whatever you want to do and you can do everything because why not? Um, yeah. We ask why, but why not? So 
Um, yeah, bro, I believe keep you. Keep going. Yeah. So just keep going. I always just say keep going. That's my motto for real. Keep just going. Keep going. That's and, amazing, you know, bro. That's and amazing. Do what you feel. Do what you feel. Like, who's to say that you're wrong? And, you know, nobody can judge you. So. For sure. Yeah, going. definitely. Definitely. So, man, like, that's amazing because I remember uh, for the viewers watching, you know, he called me one day and, you know, he was inspiring somebody and being a blessing to somebody else. And uh, I was up in the morning and he calls me and he says, keep going. And I, I truly feel like it was something he was speaking to himself. He was speaking to that other youthful person. And um, it was speaking to me because it's like, man, keep going. And that's that's a real motto, man. Like that's and that's, that's a real that's a real, real thing. And that's just a blessing to hear that from a young man. He's 23 years old and uh, been through life's traumas, life's life's ups and downs. And to be able to push through something and to know he has that fight to keep going. It's like it's an amazing feeling because most right. people you know, they'll stop or they'll get frustrated and man, like it's just a blessing that you're doing that. So, uh, w another thing I want to ask you, mm -hmm. so your music, what do you have right now and what platforms can we find you on? Uh, what are you actually working on and what, you know, what advice you have for, for artists? you know, in their music and what you're wanting to put out there, man. Just, you know, quick and short. I know I just asked a lot, but... Yeah. No, you know, it's all so good. Uh, I'll sum it up. Um, I have one song, which is on all platforms, YouTube, you know, whatever you want to type in, Tidal, Spotify, um, Apple Music, all that good stuff, SoundCloud. Um, it's called College Dropout. It's uh, by Big P House. That's me, of course. Um... Yeah, that's the only song that I do have out right now on platforms. It's been out since 2020 of August. That's my first song that I put out, my first song that I did. Um, I'm proud of it. I'm working on some stuff right now, some stuff in the works, and I really do plan. I'm trying to really push dropping the album or EP or something like that. Um, I don't want to do any more singles for right now. I just want to give y'all like some, some real like, you know, artwork, you know, with some, you know, different sounds and just different vibes. So I'm working on that right now. Hopefully I can get something done. Not hopefully, I am going to get something done before the summer. So definitely probably drop something before my birthday. My birthday is May 22nd. So that'd be the beginning, you know, of summer. So. For we, sure. We will push so, for that. We got we got two questions here, okay? We got yep, entrepreneurs go allowed, right? There's say uh sad and brownie and entrepreneurs allowed. Sad and brownie says, Can we hear the chorus? And entrepreneurs allowed says, Can you drop a tune for us? They want to hear <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go ahead and you know, if you got something to play it on or just a cappella, you know, we just want to hear, um, let the people hear. Uh, Let's see. What can I, what can I, uh, go ahead, drop it, man. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see if I can remember that. Eliante, man. Nah, they want to, man. Let's hear the let's hear the college dropout. Let's just, oh, man, college whatever, dropout. If you want to sing? We man can sing too. So, uh, yep. whatever, it is, whatever it is that you want to do, man. <laughs> hey. College dropout, praying every day I make it. Please don't give me your advice because I won't take it. I don't know why these want to do me wrong. Woke up one morning and my auntie Z was gone. Smoking, drinking every day, man. I, oh, man. Because my new girl, when I first found out my was gone, <laughs> can't go too yes, much sir. into it. I don't want to, you know, curse. You know. You want to go into it? Let's go, Eliante. Let's get this singing going uh, real quick. 
when I make it Hollywood, Elian to my diamonds, I ain't tripping, I ain't rushing, cause I know it's got timing, dreaming big, living lavish, yeah, I just want the finest shit, niggas pushing buttons, I ain't trying to click, seen so much shit at a young age, remember when my nigga Glass had to cop the 12 gauge, had so many plays, but I had to play it safe, praying for them better days, job won't give a rest, but niggas joining cold sundry luck shit. How you gonna live a life if you can't bend the rules? Niggas making the same mistake, nigga, yeah, you a fool. What about school? They said they give you tools. But what about that time when I was on my, I wasn't thinking about class. Even when I was in class, I was always in the back, tired of always being last. I do not dwell on the past. Sold yourself up. No, I don't condone that. Why they max is God dare me to be the truth? And I put that on my crew. Niggas dare me. I'm sipping on that dude, say. I tried to do with you, say. Look out of here. That's a little little preview. I got some stuff <laughs> recorded. Um, you know, like I said, it's a little yeah. early right now. I'm a little rusty, but you know, so, I got some stuff in the works. Y'all gonna hear from DeAndre, you know. For sure. He's uh, one of my big supporters, so we go back amen. and forth with that and you know. Amen, amen. So right before we go, the last thing entrepreneurs allow us is tell us where to where to get it at please and she says where to follow do you have a website you know uh, you yeah I, I have a um i have an instagram um it's at big p house b-i-g the letter p and then the house um that's where you can follow me at um, that's where i post most of my stuff um snippets or whatever um and that name that I got that name from my father as well. My my dad name is Paris. I'm a Paris. I'm a junior. So that's the background on my name as well. He was uh, P House. So I was always little P House. And then when I got older, I became big P House. So that's the little backdrop on my name. And that's what I go by. But yeah. For sure. For sure, man. Thank you for being here. We love you. Um, it's been an inspiration because I do want to cry because you are my brother, bro. Man, and, I don't uh, cry, man, because I'm <laughs> cry here too. Man. Hey, man, it's good because it's real. God is real, man, and I'm just thankful that I get to be a part of this and that you're here. And, um, you know, as a man, bro, yeah. sometimes we do need to let it out and cry. So we just want to say thank you, Big P House. We support you. We're going to hear from you again, and we want to thank all of our viewers. Uh, stay tuned for the next show, right? It's going to be great. It's going to be a blessing. And uh, let's do it. Let's encourage each other. Stay positive. And you can always do both. Remember, y'all, you can always do both. You don't have to choose either or. Yeah, because why, why, why not? And now for today's yeah, spot. You guys for having me. Yumi Radio was originally founded in 2009. Back then, it was called Advanced Media Production. After winning first place in the Jamaica Broilers Fair Play Awards, the company ceased operations around 2012. In December 2018 the company was rebranded and brought back into operations with new ownership, and in February 2019, it launched its first radio station, Yumi Radio, under the call sign, WUME, DB, New York. Yumi Radio is a digital radio station, owned and operated, by UME Digital Media Inc., a digital studio and multimedia company, headquartered in Bronx, New York. Our brands are committed to inspiring, educating, and entertaining people, through transformative and empowering content. Our mission is to reach 1 million households, touch 1 million lives, and showcase 1 million brands. Get the Yumi Radio app for the full experience, available via your Apple and Google Play stores. If you want to listen on the web, you may go to app.umeradio.com or via our website at www.umeradio.com. Our content can be watched on Kareed Vision. You can also listen in via Amazon Music, iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Google Podcast, Podbean, TuneU, Live 365, Spotify Stitcher Player FM Listen Notes. For all business inquiries, contact us at info at umeradio.com. This station is 100% community funded. To support us, please visit yumiradio.com forward slash get involved. Subscribe on YouTube, Instagram, and everywhere online at UME Radio. Thank you for supporting us. Yumi Radio, positive entertainment 24-7.
She is a lifestyle engineer and a digital wealth creator, passionate about financial empowerment. You're tuned in to Wealth Mindset with Marcia Gay Miles. Hey, 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 happy Saturday, happy weekend, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the Wealth Mindset Show. Now, it is said that our lives are transformed when our minds are renewed. A wealthy life is therefore a product of a wealthy mindset. So this Wealth Mindset Show seeks to renew the mind with proven plans, principles, and philosophies that will establish the right paradigms for prosperity, in all areas of life. With the wealthy mindset, entrepreneurs and wealth seekers will be empowered to activate, empowered to innovate, create, elevate, and most importantly, to leave an inheritance for their children's children and a legacy in them. A legacy that creates a brand new generation of a wealthy mindset. Again, my name is Marcia Gay Miles, and welcome to the Wealth Mindset Show. Now, I, as mentioned, I'm a lifestyle engineer, I'm a digital wealth creator, and I am actually from Jamaica. So I'm building digital wealth and assets online right here from Jamaica to the world. Now, as a leader in the financial education and empowerment space, I have identified a common factor that plagues the majority who also seek financial enrichment one that actually has affected me. And that is what I have termed a weak wealth mindset. So how do you actually know that you have a weak wealth mindset? Well, very simply put, if you have the information, meaning you already know, you already know, you have been educated, you have been taught, you have been told, but you're not actually implementing, you're not actually living it out, then you have a weak wealth mindset. But Fortunately for you, that is why we are here. You see, the Wealth Mindset Show seeks to develop and strengthen your mindset, all our mindsets, so that we will now go out and become that person, become that wealthy person. Because once your mind is properly set, you'll be set up to create the wealth you desire. Now, today's topic is actually about leadership. Now, you must be saying, well, how does leadership has, have anything to do with wealth? I'm here to tell you it absolutely does. Wealth and leadership go hand in hand. As a matter of fact, there is a popular saying by John C. Maxwell, everything rises and falls on leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership, including your wealth. So speaking of wealth, leadership is also said to be the highest paid profession in the world. You see, the truth is having the right strategic leadership, whether it be in your organization or even in your own business, is a powerful value add to that organization or business. See, strategic leadership enhances the wealth creation process in both entrepreneurial and established organization and leads to above average returns. Now, one of the greatest teachers and thought leaders in the space of leadership, I mentioned his name just now. His name is John C. Maxwell. You can check him out. I mean, he has written the most books in the history of the world on leadership, point blank period, okay? And he's actually the um, highest selling author in the space of non-fictional books, John C. Maxwell. And I'm certain he would agree because one of his most popular sayings is that a good leader knows the way, goes the way, and then shows the way. Let me repeat that. A good leader knows the way, goes the way, and then shows the way. In context of wealth, I would therefore then translate that to mean that to create wealth, one must first of all know. So step one, you must know. What should you know? Well, the first thing you should know is how to be a good leader. You should know how to be a good leader, which means you should study leadership. You should seek to understand it, understand the role it plays in your life and therefore in your wealth. Number two, go, go. You need to move from information 
to implementation, which is what I was speaking about earlier. You need to move from a weak wealth mindset to a strong wealth mindset because you're now actually doing what you were taught to do, what you were um, educated on. You're actually implementing it, so you're becoming the good leader. You want to be an example for your own self before you can even be an example for others. Start with leading yourself. Start with loving yourself enough to become a better you. And then number three, show. Show. You see, one of the most powerful forms of leadership is service. Serve others by showing them the way, the proven way. You just walk the path. Turning around and showing someone else that blueprint, that roadmap, leading others, loving others, that is what a good leader does. So they know the way, they go the way, and they show the way. This is completing the process which establishes the fundamentals of leadership, learning, living, and then leading. Absolutely. Uh, knowledge is the key. That's what Aubrey has to say. Knowledge is absolutely the key. So we always start with knowledge as the foundation. But we move from knowledge to implementation to then instruction. So information, implementation, instruction. That just came to me a while ago. Now, let's talk about five levels of leadership in pursuit of wealth. Now, John C. Maxwell, again, you're going to hear me talk about him a lot because I have, I'm yet next to the good book, the wonderful book of all wisdom, right? The Bible. I'm yet to find someone that was able to connect the dots of leadership in a very practical way for us as us to live out every day. And he has a very popular book called The Five Levels of Leadership. Now, I actually pivoted from that diagram that you're going to be seeing there to really then therefore see how does that connect with wealth? And we're going to talk about the five levels of leadership in pursuit of wealth. So you want to develop these five levels of leadership so you will become an effective leader a strategic leader, a wealthy leader. The first level, which is the lowest level, is what John C. would say is positional leadership. It speaks about rights. Now, let's connect that to wealth. You actually have the right to be wealthy. You have the right to wealth. You see, you're a child of God. You are God's highest form of creation. You have the right to wealth. Your identity is that of an heir, of a priest, right? Of royalty. Your DNA is that of wealth. Wealth is in your makeup. Wealth is in your makeup. You have to therefore know it and accept it first. You have to believe that you have the right to wealth. That's the first step. Now, the second level of leadership that you're seeing is called permission leadership. And that speaks to relationships. But we're talking about wealth here. So the, the question you now have to ask yourself, now that you realize, hold on, I am entitled to, I have the right to be wealthy. Now we need to do some renewing and rewiring. What is your relationship with yourself? What is it that you have been telling yourself? You see, if you didn't believe before that you had the right to be wealthy, you may have been saying to yourself over and over that, you know, wealth is for certain persons. I will never be. We're going to cancel that. We're going to cancel that culture, right? And we're going to now speak about believing in you and therefore the narrative, the relationship with yourself that is your self-talk affirming you. I am above and not beneath. I am the first and not the last. I am the lender and not the borrower. I owe no man, no thing. I am wealthy. I have the right to wealth. You have to believe it and you have to develop a relationship with yourself that continues to reiterate it. Affirmations, declarations, positive self-talk, personal development, and of course, wealth knowledge and understanding. 
daily pursuit of these things will put you in a position where you're developing a very strong and healthy wealth relationship with yourself so that you will now develop that wealth mindset. You see, when you love on you, when you pour into you and your number one relationship, with, which is with yourself, then you'll be able to pour from you. So you have to pour in you, develop you, renew you, believe in you so that you can pour from you. And then you will eventually pour from you a cup of wealth, a cup of wealth. Now, the third level of leadership is production. Production leadership is what John C. has, and I'm going to connect it to wealth for you. Results results so within so without so we spoke about accepting then we spoke about renewing right and putting yourself in a position of that relationship with yourself that believes that i am worthy of wealth and i will be wealthy and you now need to produce now that you filled up the within you can actually have that expression without so you're renewing your mind. You're saying the new things to you. You're changing your thoughts. Your thoughts connect to your feelings. Your feelings connect to your actions and your actions connect to your results. So once you change the inside, you will now have a chain reaction that will change what's happening on the outside, giving you the results you seek. And what are the results we seek? Wealth, right? So a wealthy mindset starts from the mind, Feelings, actions, results. When you pour in, results pour out. Wealth pours out. So what you visualize in the spiritual, in your imagination, in your mind, you're seeing yourself doing it. That will now be displayed and seen in the physical. So it moves from visualization to manifestation. Now, the fourth level of leadership is people development or what John C. says is reproduction. Hmm. Well, what does this speak to? You first developed you. That's what that process was about. Believing for you, renewing for you, and experiencing it and manifesting it for you. Now, after you've developed you, you can develop others. I said it earlier. A good leader knows the way, goes the way, and then shows the way. You now have a relationship with you. You got the results. You can now help others to do the same thing. Why? Because you did it for you. That is your qualification. You did it for you. And that's all that needs to be said. So you are going to now share that blueprint, share the roadmap, share those step-by-step, -step, those practical steps. You want to now be an inspiration and an example to others. You know, you want them to be knowing, hey, if God did it for Marsha, <laughs> then God can do it for me too. You see, the word says God is no respecter of man, which simply means he has no favoritism. He's very neutral. And what he does for one, he will do for another. But what you need to understand is therefore, if you practice the same principles and the same plans, possibly the same strategies, it may not be the exact result, but certainly you're going to get similar results. So God will do it for you too. Now you can lead others, show others the way so that they will have the results that they desire that are similar and aligned with what you just produced. You can even repeat this process and reproduce these same results of wealth in other areas of your life. So it's not just about reproduction in others. It can also be reproduction in other areas. So let us say you wanted to be wealthy not necessarily with money, right? But you just wanted to have a wealthy relationship with your children. Great. You worked on that. You did the same process and you worked on all of that. You can now say, if I've done it with my relationships with my family, I can do it with my relationship with my health. I can do it with my relationship with my money. I can do it with my relationship and my profession at my job or in my business. You see, success leaves clues. And you have just set up the path of the clues. You can reproduce them in other areas of your life. My pastor often says, you want to claim your mountain. You want to climb your mountain, which means you want to focus on one thing, 
decide what it is, then you want to climb to the top of it, have successful results in it. But the beautiful thing about when you're on the top of your mountain is that you get to see all the other mountains around you. And then you can now have reproduction in all the other mountains as well. Isn't that amazing? So that is number four. The fifth and final level of leadership is actually what is known as pinnacle leadership. It actually speaks about respect. Now, when it comes to wealth, what that is saying is that, hey, who you are and what you represent and what you actually realize in your own journey has refined you and positioned you as a specialist, renowned for your value in the space. That is what we're talking about. Your journey, your walk, it can't be taken away from you. It cannot be taken away from you. It's now imprinted in you. And that has now refined you, it's changed you. And as a, as a result of that, you're positioned as a specialist, as a master, as an expert. And you will now be able to bring value to others as you lead others by showing them the way and sharing with them the blueprint. I like that comment a while ago from Satin Brownie. You claim it, you climb it, and you conquer it. That's it. Claim it, climb it, and conquer it. And then you can do it with any other area. Now, remember this entire process started with your step one, which was you and your belief. Belief is truly the key to this process. And truly, all things, all things, you know, you, you know what the word all means? All means inclusive of every single thing. All things are possible to them that believe. That's what the word says. Believing makes it so. So if we understand, therefore, how to believe, then we are going to be able to apply that science and those principles to believing for ourselves that we can create wealth, to believing, therefore, in that process until it actually shows you the results you're looking for in your life. And then, of course, to believing that, hey, if I could do it, if I can do it, you know, if I had all this debt and I was able to do it, if I had all of this brokenness with money, if I had all of this as I was looking ahead to achieving and I was able to believe and apply all these principles, then guess what? That will make it so. Entrepreneurs Allowed says a lot of people don't gain wealth because they want to conquer before climbing up. Oh, ah, oh, that is so powerful. You know, last week, my, my pastor again, he says, first things first. That's what he spoke about. First things first. If we look back at that diagram that I had up of the five levels of leadership, I want you to understand something. It goes in order. You cannot skip the process. You can't conquer first without claiming and without climbing. It's a process. That's why they say fall in love with the process. The results will be certain if you just fall in love with the process. Too many people fall in love with the results, with the end result. And therefore, it's disappointing because the process is what prepares you for the promise. I repeat, the process prepares you for the promise. So you have to start at that position, at that right level. Then you have to then build and develop the relationship at the permission level. Then it is a must that you go into the production where you are showing results before that repeat of results, by the way. What, what is repeated in results is what develops what are called habits habits and therefore habits are what develop you which is why the next level is called personal development i mean yeah people development personal development same thing personal is your you are the person and then people development are others you have to develop the habit repeatedly before you are developed as a person before you are a brand new person. It's not what you do one time 
that defines you. It's what you do repeatedly that defines you. And then after you've developed as the person and you're developing others, and after you have moved in from re to reproduction, then you'll be at the pinnacle. And you're at the pinnacle now because you're someone that's in a position so you can say, hey, I have the position of success. You're someone that's built the relationship and has had the permission. You're someone that has absolutely, therefore, produced and have the results. You're someone that has now developed and transformed you and can guide and transform others. And when you do that over and over and over, you're at the pinnacle, you're at the top, you've conquered. You know, I saw that comment a while ago um, from Satin Brownie, um, where she was saying, absolutely, some people can't win because they won't claim, then accountability is missing. Claiming not just the win, but the responsibility. Absolutely. And I saw another comment um, before that. Hmm. Entrepreneurs are low. They want others to pay them to build their businesses. Do you know, the truth is, the truth is, that's an interesting and powerful point, right? But it's unfortunate. And that's why we have the Wealth Mindset Show, so that we can now be held accountable to the truth, to the process, right? And go through this process and be guided by these processes and these principles and these philosophies, right? And these plans. Now, I always, um, always like to wrap up with a recommendation. And I've been speaking and singing the praises of John C. Maxwell. But as I mentioned, every single thing starts first with you, starts first with your belief. So before you can talk about transforming what is around you, you have to transform what is within you. So my recommendation, my book recommendation is actually from John C. Maxwell himself. It's called Developing the Leader Within. Developing the Leader Within. Listen when I tell you. If you want to get those practical step-by-step -step of how you can now transform you, how you can firstly lead you, see what he says? A good leader knows the way, then goes the way before he shows the way. You need to claim and climb before you conquer, right? I absolutely want to encourage you to get this book. Learn to lead you first. And of course, as I mentioned before, leadership, strategic leadership is directly tied to wealth generation, a wealthy mindset. Deliver, develop it within, you develop the mindset and you will develop it without. So I am so excited that you had joined me for the Wealth Mindset Show. And I have no doubt that you were indeed encouraged. You are certainly in informed and you have been inspired. It's been an absolute pleasure to be able to lead <laughs> and to learn with you. And we can absolutely stay connected on all social platforms, um, on Instagram, Facebook, at Marsha Gay Miles, or you can check me out on The Lifestyle Engineer. And of course, remember, you can continue to connect with content like this at UME Radio and all of our platforms. I want to leave you with this reminder. All things are possible for those that believe. Now, what I love is that after the spotlight, you're going to be now connected to some practical step-by-step -step breakdowns of leadership and how it impacts you in business. So now that we've gotten the mind right, are going to get the steps for you to actually walk it out. You're, you know you know now, now let's talk about going, right? You've been informed, let's talk about implementing. So we have business and branding after the spotlight and Shola Smith will be bringing you that content so that you can walk it out, not just talk about it, be about it, right? It's been an absolute pleasure. It's your girl, Marsha Gay Miles, and thank you for joining me on the Wealth Mindset Show. Bye for now. And now for today's spotlight. Yumi Radio was originally founded in 2009. Back then, it was called Advanced Media Production. After winning first place in the Jamaica Broilers Fair Play Awards, the company ceased operations around 2012. 
In December 2018 the company was rebranded, and brought back into operations with new ownership. And in February 2019, it launched its first radio station, Yumi Radio, under the call sign, WUME, DB, New York. Yumi Radio is a digital radio station, owned and operated, by UME Digital Media Inc., a digital studio and multimedia company, headquartered in Bronx, New York. Our brands are committed to inspiring, educating, and entertaining people through transformative and empowering content. Our mission is to reach 1 million households, touch 1 million lives, and showcase 1 million brands. Get the Yumi Radio app for the full experience, available via your Apple and Google Play stores. If you want to listen on the web, you may go to app.yumiradio.com or via our website at www.umeradio.com. Our content can be watched on Kareed Vision. You can also listen in via Amazon Music, iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Google Podcast, Podbean, TuneU, Live 365, Spotify Stitcher Player FM Listen Notes. For all business inquiries, contact us at info at yumiradio.com. This station is 100% community funded. To support us, please visit yumiradio.com forward slash get involved. Subscribe on YouTube, Instagram, and everywhere online at UME Radio. Thank you for supporting us. UME Radio, positive entertainment 24-7. Are you ready for the weekend? Weekends on UME Radio. Get the UME Radio app. Weekends on UME Radio. The sun is up and so are we. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook, all at UME Radio. UME Radio. Positive entertainment 24-7. Subscribe on YouTube and click the notification bell. Welcome to Entertainment Now on UMI Radio, WUMEDB New York. This show takes you beyond the music, dance, box office and thrills, for deeper and more meaningful insights into the minds and hearts of the players. We share stories about pop culture, celebrities, and everything entertainment, but with education and empowerment in mind. It's all about positive entertainment. Get fit. Mind, body and soul with pro athlete, impact speaker, and performance coach, DeAndre Borrell. Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. She decided to jump, and it was the best decision she ever made. You are now tuned in to Business and Branding with Show. She is a lifestyle engineer and a digital wealth creator, passionate about financial empowerment. You're tuned in to Wealth Mindset with Marsha Gay Miles. It's Weekends with Jesse, a resource for the community. Black health is black wealth. Saturdays at 10 a.m. Be the light. You're watching. Apostle Faith Live, with children, reading Bible stories. To be on the show, go to walmo.org forward slash media, to apply. Tune in every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. For every child, everywhere. Do not miss out on the fun. Keep watching. Let's talk. Relationships. On You Me Radio. So, what are we talking about? Marriage, dating, parenting, business, and love, emotions, sex. It's a conversation with me, Lady Misty, and DJ KTE on everything from hot topics to taboos. Join us Mondays at 9 p.m. live on UME Radio. Follow us at Let's Talk Relationship Show on Facebook or on UME Radio on Instagram. Let's Talk Relationships. Arguments for the grown. Get the UME Radio app to listen wherever you are. That is UME Radio one word underneath it all who are we sexually bible cufflinks 
and Stilettos, with Giselle St. James. Monday nights at 10 p.m. For mature audiences only. She decided to jump, and it was the best decision she ever made. You are now tuned in to Business and Branding with Show. Morning. How is everyone doing? Uh, thank you so much, Marsha, for the wealth mindset. Uh, that was an amazing, um, some amazing tips that you gave us. Uh, so what we will be doing today is we're going to follow up on those same principles, the philosophies, and the plans and give you some practical step-by-step -step ways of how you can develop uh, into pulling out the leader that is inside of you. Now, everyone knows in order to have a successful business or work on a successful project or work as a team player, you have to. You have to be mindful of being a leader and you have to be mindful of having the skill sets to be a leader. Um, just want to give you guys a little bit of background information about me. My name is Shola. I'm a business owner. I'm an entrepreneur. I am a leader uh, in the space and the field that I am in. I am the owner of a company called Smith Blends, which is an all-natural tea company. We are located in sunny Orlando, Florida. And we actually, we grow our teas and we convert them into iced teas. And the business is doing really, really well. And I can attribute it to being a leader and also cultivating these qualities that are needed and these skills are needed uh, in order to run a successful business and to grow and to scale. So I'm excited about today, <laughs> uh, today's um, show because we have someone who is in the media space, who's a leader in the media space. But before we do uh, bring in uh, my guest for today, I, I wanted to explain um, just some practical ways that you can actually develop being a leader. Now, when leadership you have to know how to lead people. So you have to know how to lead people and you have to be good at it. So you have to be an example. You also need to be a, a coach and you need to know how to support people. Now, if you're a person that likes to work by themselves or you don't really like people, you're not really a people person, I would uh, definitely recommend that you take little small practical steps um, in order to coach and to support. Support is free, support is paid, but support is support and everyone needs support. So if you're encouraging someone, that is considered as being supportive. If you are sowing the seed into someone's business, that is also considered uh, being supportive and buying into the vision that the person does have. You also want to make sure that you are able to look forward. So looking forward, allows you not to stumble upon the little obstacles that may come your way. And you're driven and you're motivated. We talked about this last week, driven and motivated in order to move forward. You also have to be able to empower people. You have to be able to empower them, equip them with the things that they need in order to be successful. And so also along with empowering people, you have to inspire. Now, I love inspiration. I get inspired quite often. And um, one of the things that I usually do to inspire other people is I share my testimony and I also share my experiences and how that worked out for me. So that way, even if it sparks one thought into someone else uh, to gear them towards entrepreneurship or, you know, taking on a project or taking on a task, inspiration is what allows you to kind of forward. So that is definitely one of the things that leadership, um, you have to have those policies. You have to be a good example. We discussed that. And you have to be a visionary. There is no way that you would be able to lead someone if you do not, if you're not able to see the vision for yourself. And so I do believe that all leaders have some type of visionary, some type of vision that um, God gave them, right, in order to complete their assignment. So I wanted to just touch on a few skills before we bring in our guests. And so these are some skills that you must have in, um, or consider to be a leader. You have to have great communication skills, 
That is a must. You must know how to communicate and you must mean what you say and say what you mean. And it has to be clear, you know? It can't be something that's like fuzzy and, you know, people don't know exactly, you know, what you're saying or whatnot. Just make sure that your communication is clear. You can actually over communicate just to make sure that it's being delivered effectively. You also want to make sure that you are positive. Positivity is what people need to understand um, the possibilities. And so being positive, I know that you can uh, download affirmations, get some affirmations, you can write them down, you can put sticky notes up. Um, the positive affirmations will definitely help with you repeating them to yourself. These are all things that you need to be doing behind the scenes in order to be an effective business owner, entrepreneur, or just, just a uh, a person skilled in your field, uh, you have to be a problem solver. Problem solving, you have to take advantages of the opportunities in the marketplace. And the only way that you're going to be able to do that is if you have the mindset of being a problem solver. Hey, good morning, Satin. Satin says, please say that loud to those in the back. <laughs> say what you mean and mean what you say. Absolutely. You also want to make sure that you are creative. Creativity as a leader will help you to kind of make decisions and it will also spark, you know, the thought of how am I going to arrive to this des destination? You also want to be a mentor and you also want to be mentored. And I'll say it again. You also want to be a mentor to other people, but you also need to be able to submit yourself enough to be mentored. Being a leader in the marketplace requires you to learn. You're always learning. One leader never knows enough. This is why you're, you're able to build a team because you have skilled people who can come together to produce the result that everyone knows of the gold, right? And so one man cannot do every single thing that there is, but you wanna make sure that you empower your team enough to trust their expertise in whatever it is that you guys are deciding to, to do. And so another uh, quality and skill for business leaders is self-motivation. You have to take the initiative to be motivated. You have to take the initiative in completing your tasks and in going towards the direction of your task. It's something that someone cannot do for you. You have to do it for yourself. Oh my God, please say that aloud so my clients can hear you. Yes, satin clients, you have to be self-motivated, right? And you also, this is another uh, great thing that I'm always forever working on is organization. Organization will help you be an effective leader. Um, you want to make sure that you are organized in the workplace, organized in the marketplace. You want to make sure that you have, you know, you use the tools for your schedule, your calendar. Everyone right now has a smartphone. You want to make sure that you are utilizing those tools in order to help make your, you know, your journey on this project or your journey on this assignment a little bit better. And if you're organized, the team will see that you're organized and they will get organized. And then it will help with your productivity. Um, and last but not least, delegation. This is a hard one for me. In the beginning, I took on every task there was. I didn't even trust anyone enough to delegate. And I believe that in me not trusting other people to delegate a task to them, it crippled me. And it kind of delayed me a little bit um, because those were tasks that I had on my plate that I needed to get off. So definitely, if you are able to delegate, try it. I know you have to take baby steps. You have to make sure that they're equipped. However, it will be a weight off of your shoulder in order to get your task done. So today's guest, we have a special guest today. Um, I definitely want to thank him. His name is Garfield Burford. And he is, I want to read, good morning. <laughs> Very good morning to you, Shola. How are Fantastic you? Fantastic being with you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go great. ahead. I'm, I'm being go. inspired by you right now. Huh? Thank you. 
I'm just I'm being inspired just listening to you right now. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. That's what the show is here for. Um, um, so we're all about inspiration. But I definitely want to make sure that our viewers know your background. So Garfield is a director of news, sports, and current affairs at ABS Television Radio in Antigua and Barbuda's public broadcaster, right? And that's pretty awesome within itself. He is a renowned and accomplished regional journalist with close to two decades of experience across all broadcast media platforms. So we want to welcome you today for coming on and sharing your journey and sharing with the viewers how you see yourself as a media leader. Yes, uh, great to be with you, Shola. Great to be with your listeners. Great to be with your viewers. Uh, and just uh, a, a quick indication, a quick update. Uh, actually, no, more than two decades. Uh, okay, awesome. In, in, in Congratulations. In so I think I might have given you a little bit dated information earlier. So yes, uh, actually, no, when I, I check it, it's actually more than two decades now. Oh, I've been wow. in the field since 1999, so around about 23 Ooh. years uh, or so in, in the media field. And not, as a, not the entire time as a leader. Uh, cer certainly a, a leader for about half of that in terms of being news editing and 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 also uh, in terms of uh, being a news manager and director of news and so on. But but it's great to be with you. And and uh, as I listened to your discussion there about leadership, it dawned on me that uh, perhaps what is the one word that could perhaps be best used to define what we need to talk about and what our listeners need to know about is passion. Absolutely. So are we passionate about our goals? Are we passionate about our own abilities? Are we passionate about our own success? And that has to be, in other words, are we also passionate about helping other people along? Are we also passionate about inspiring others, mentoring others? Passion really comes to comes to everything. And I'm reminded of, of what Alexander the Great said. And by the way, he he's a good example of, of leadership that I use, not in every sphere, but in terms of what he was able to accomplish. Uh, lived 2,300 years ago, uh, and his name is still being used uh, throughout the world even to this day, because of what he was able to accomplish at a very young age. He said it is a lovely thing to live with passion and to, and to die living an everlasting fame. Perhaps it seems a little vain and a little self-serving, but ultimately it's what, it's what it comes down to. It's about how passionate are we about our own success, about helping other people along, and about achieving our goals despite the odds. Passion, I think, comes down to everything. It, it really comes down to that. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and that's the most important thing. I agree. So, uh, so tell us a little bit of what made you get started in the media, in the media industry. What what drove you to even pursue being in the media space? Right. So uh, I started pretty much uh, out of high school in media, and so this was uh, run about in the nineteen nineties, mid to late nineteen nineties. I was always doing oratory. I was always doing oratorical contests. I was always doing uh, speech recitals, etc. In school. Uh, so when it was uh, time for, for example, <laughs> I was also the valedictorian in my high school graduation. Uh, nice. So any sort of speech, uh, any sort of uh, you know elocution kind of uh, activities, I was always going to be called on. And I determined at the time, Shola, that uh, perhaps it would be best. And I think that's one of the first things that's important to identify your strengths and to Absolutely. play to those strengths and to also try to cultivate, nurture, and develop those strengths. So I, I determined to myself that, look, I'm going to make something of this. Uh, in, in, in fact, I've been blessed by the Almighty with uh, a, a gift. Some persons would say the gift of gab. Uh, but essentially, I'm able to elocute. I'm able to articulate. It's still a gift. Uh, it's still a gift. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And so, uh, in other words, how do I, as, as much as possible, cultivate and nurture and use this uh, for my own uh, success and for the success of others. And so uh, I, I determined that I was going to go into the field of communication, not necessarily okay. journalism per se at the time, but how do, I, uh, how do I get to communicate with other people? Because I figured that I was able to communicate effectively. And so uh, I, I developed uh, a love for media. And so my first opportunity came when I was pretty much in the right place at the right time, which is also going to be a crucial area as well. You have to position yourself to be in the right place at the right time to benefit Absolutely. from opportunities. And, and I was able, for example, to do an interview on a radio station, on our national radio stations in Jamaica. Uh, by, by the way, I'm Jamaican. And, and yes. <laughs> yes, there you go. Awesome. Uh, I mean, I, I work in Antigua now, but I'm Jamaican. So uh, I was able to do an interview while in uh, sixth form in, in high school and uh, the radio personalities were extraordinarily impressed uh, by what I was able to do. And so they offered me, for example, a position to work with them. 
as, as, a, as a community correspondent, as a news correspondent for them. And that was uh, my foray into media. Never looked back since. I, I've pretty much uh, grown into, you know, it, you know pretty much just uh, stepping up the ladder in terms of uh, starting with radio, then moving into community television broadcasting, then international broadcasting. And, and now, as I said, um, I've established myself uh, as a regional broadcaster. So it's important to establish what your goals are, uh, to be passionate about those goals, and to work incessantly towards accomplishing those goals, no matter the odds. Of course, there have been challenges along the way. Of course, right. we continue to have challenges, but it's about being ensuring that you continue to be passionate. Uh, if you're passionate, it will come. The goals will come. They will happen. Absolutely. No, I love that. Um, Go Inspired Jamaica Foundation says, sounds so direct and confident. And I, I picked that up as well. The confidence in your journey. And I believe that that is what, by you sharing your story, that is what helps to inspire others to go to just have the confidence to actually step out and take the risk of starting. Usually the first step is the hardest. Sometimes we're not, we're, not, we're not really 100% confident, like, is this going to work? Is this not going to work? But the first step to go ahead and start, I mean, that's half the battle right there. Sure, let me say a quick thing uh, in terms of why perhaps that comment came in was that I, I suppose the, the use of the word direct was uh, a pun because I used to host a program in Jamaica called Direct. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they have the inside think, story, right? <laughs> there you go. So I think that might be that might be a pun on the direct there a while ago. Yeah, and I, I just I wanted to make sure that I, I did not lose this comment, but uh, entrepreneurs out loud said so just hearing him made me sit up. It made me sit up straight too. Uh, okay. Like this, yeah, yeah it definitely sure. made me set up straight as, <laughs> as well. So when you started in, when you started on radio, did they put you uh, together with the team? So were you able to go ahead and work with the team in order to kind of fine tune where you fit in and how you were going to execute what was uh, asked for you to do? Yes, yes. I was working with a team. So essentially, I was community correspondent or, or as the uh, parish correspondent for Nationwide Radio in St. Mary. I'm from okay. St. Mary in Jamaica. And uh, so while I was going to school, I, then I finished sixth form, I continued working with them. So what it meant was that I would get stories, for example, from St. Mary, court stories, police, from the police blotters, anything that would, would have happened in St. Mary. I would get that story and then uh, feed it into the, the broadcaster. Uh, so essentially, I would be working with a team. I'd be liaising with a news editor there, who at the time was Elizabeth Bennett, uh, who, I mean, still a, a very, very good friend of mine still, uh, Elizabeth Bennett. And she works with the, uh, she works in communications now with the Office of Utilities Regulation in Jamaica. So yes, it would mean essentially collating that information, getting it onto news editors, and uh, working alongside other reporters to get the information out as Absolutely. quickly as possible and as accurately as possible. So yes, there was a fair bit of co collaboration, coordination uh, with with, uh, with a team as well. So that really helped as well to fashion my own, you know, collaboration with teams and and and, and team building and team uh, and team spirit and so on. Absolutely, and I, I also do find that once you are able to go through the journey uh, for yourself, right? When you see new uh, reporters come in. How do you take on that responsibility? Because it, it's something that each individual has to take on. Like, hey, I see where they're going. They may, it looks like they're going in the opposite, opposite direction. How do you find that balance as far as like mentoring someone else who has now pretty much walked through the same door that you have were privy to walk through? Right. That's a powerful point. And, and I think it, it allows me, Shola, to, to, to mention a very good point. Here it is that uh, I would have gotten certain crucial opportunities by being, in a way, it was, you could put some of it down to serendipity, put some of it down to my own uh, positioning myself into an area that would have made me be in the right place at the right time. Uh, but what was clear is that I received significant assistance in terms of helping me along in my career, giving me a catalyst, giving me a push. I see that my responsibility as also doing that for others, for, for younger individuals coming into the field as well. That the same way I was helped, the same way I was given a catalyst, I also need to also help to catalyze their own careers as well. And so whatever I, I, I know, I pass that on to them because life is like that. It's about progression. It's about passing Absolutely. them on. It's about ensuring that each generation uh, continues to build that information and, 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 and continue to enrich and empower the next generation. It's, again, looking back at the life of Alexander the Great, pretty much the same thing that happened in, in his case. Philip II, his father, 
mm-hmm. built, I mean, had built a foundation. Alexander came on and he took that foundation and continued uh, along the journey. So much so that by the time he died at 32 years and eight months, Shola, he was a world conqueror. Uh, he was one of the finest, in fact, arguably the best military geniuses and tacticians the world has ever seen. Uh, at such a young age, conquered pretty much the Persian Empire, which was extraordinarily uh, powerful, the world power at the time, by just being bold, by being passionate, by insisting that nothing is impossible to him who will try. I think that my responsibility is to ensure that I pass that on to other individuals uh, who, who come into the field. Uh, they must be molded, they must be mentored, uh, because it doesn't help. It doesn't help if each generation and if each person is reinventing the wheel. Human civilization has reached as far as it has, climbing from the caves to the moon and looking now towards interstellar space and so on by each generation building on the successes of others. So can you imagine if each of if each generation had to be reinventing the wheel, if we had to be reinventing fire and, and rediscovering fire? And, and in other words, those kind of quantum leaps that civilization has made, each generation is built on it. So that now we're, we're moving from, we move from the agricultural revolution to the industrial revolution, and now we're at the fourth industrial revolution. It's about building on the successes. It's the same thing that right. happens in, in leadership, helping other individuals along the way. Yeah, and I think that that is very, very powerful uh, because uh, the word says one plant, one water, right? So everyone doesn't do every single thing. You want to be able to also pick up where the slack is. And so that's how you present and position yourself as an asset, which is another uh, leadership quality. And that that is what other people see. And so if they can see that quality in you, they will give you more opportunity, more responsibility. You kind of, I've also experienced, sometimes I get some of those opportunities that are not really, you know, out there in the public. They're like a back pocket opportunity, right? Those are the ones that will catapult you into a whole different space. So you have to just be mindful um, that everyone is watching, right? And you want to make sure that you are being honorable to yourself and you want to make sure that you are practicing the principles. And once you do the work, just like what Marsha explained, if you do and practice the principles, it's going to bring you to wealth. It's going to bring you to that desired end uh, outcome. So I definitely want to commend you I think that you've inspired, you've inspired me. I know you inspired the viewers. I've seen a couple of comments mm-hmm. flash by. I, there was a question. Uh, it says, you, you sound so self-assured and so clear. Do you ever have doubts and how do you treat that? How do you become so confident in your leadership? That's a great but, question. Yes, it is. It is a powerful question. There will always be doubts, but what overcomes those doubts? How are you able to counterbalance those doubts? So doubts are like like a weight. And then how do you ensure that there's a counterweight? So there's a weight, you have to be able to counterbalance that weight. And I'm able to say that what, what is able to do that, what is able to be the counterbalance for the doubts and the fears and the inhibitions and uh, the anxieties is going to be your passion. Coming back to the same word earlier. In other words, right. what are you passionate about? And each individual has to find their passion. What makes right. you, uh, in other words, what do you see as your perhaps your biggest contribution? You know, there's a song that says we're a child of the universe. Uh, you know, no, no less than the trees and the stars, we have a right to be here. In this, uh, in the, I mean, seeing yourself as a child of the universe, what is your greatest contribution to the universe? You have to be passionate about that. And then once you identify that passion, it, you, you sustain it because passion can die if you don't water it and sustain it and nurture Absolutely. it. So you have to Absolutely. nurture your passion and every time you have a doubt, you have to go back and re- revert to that passion. In other words, why did you start this journey in the first place? Mm. So, for example, when Alexander had his greatest, you know, when, for example, there were challenges and inhibitions, and even his own soldiers were saying to him, and by the way, in terms of uh, there's, th- th- there are few individuals in history who have been able to inspire people as much as Alexander have. He was able to inspire a relatively small band of soldiers, Shola, to... Uh, essentially conquer Asia Minor, to conquer much of the, well, conquer the Persian Empire uh, and to establish Greece as the dominant power in the world. He was able to do that, to tell these soldiers that, look, you know, don't take the path of least resistance. Challenge fate, challenge history, and uh, and establish yeah. yourselves as, 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 as the greatest. In other words, he saw himself as the greatest. And what was the other crucial thing about him was that 
his mother instilled in him from a very young age that he was a son of a god. He was a son of Zeus. Mm -hmm. So he had that self-belief. He had that self-belief that no matter what, he was destined to be great. Point is, right. you have to, uh, and, and that's where his passion came from. So in other words, whatever the doubts, whatever the fears, he told himself, look, I'm going to achieve. I'm going to succeed no matter what. That no matter came, what. I mean, obviously, he was not the son of a god. That was all mythology. But what right. that was able to do, that, that the power of that thought, the power of that motivation instilled in him a passion that said, look, you're going to accomplish no matter what. So long and short is, uh, you, you, uh, that passion is crucial. That commitment, that motivation is going to be crucial. That enables you to, uh, to, to overcome any fears or doubts. Powerful. I don't think that there could have been an, a better answer uh, for that question for our viewers, for ourselves. We, I, I'm blown away. I am blown Thank away. You, sure. I, mean, I have to go back to my book and to the drawing board and re, uh, re upgrade my goals because now I've been inspired again to go ahead and make sure that my goals are attainable, right? Reachable. And also you've sparked some leadership skills inside of me to not be afraid. Like when the doubt comes, I can attack it head on. Um, so again, I would love to just say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being a leader in the media space. I really um, appreciate it. For sure. doing what you do. Uh, are, do you have uh, social media that you would like to share of how people can contact you or follow you um, to watch your journey and to see exactly what, what else you're doing in the media space? Not being on social media, Shola, funny enough, uh, but what I'd encourage individuals to, <laughs> never mind, I have, for example, you know, discussions and contra terms every day about social media. Uh, LinkedIn is fine. Um, okay. So, so I, awesome. I'm on LinkedIn, uh, which is, you know, a perfect space for professionals to interact and to, to talk about leadership and to talk about different ways of uh, being able to, uh, you know, different leadership styles, because everybody, Shola, will have their own styles, and I know that you're pretty Absolutely. much on the time, but uh, just to indicate, uh, the important thing is, how do you have that cross fertilization of ideas? Because in, 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 collab in talking and in communicating, uh, we're able to perhaps find the best uh, option, the best leadership mix. So everybody will come to the table with their own kind of leadership styles, but perhaps right. we can meld all of those to get uh, the, the, the best one. Uh, and how I know that you are a leader is because that's our topic for next week. <laughs> <laughs> the leadership style. So yeah, so you're definitely a forward thinker. But I definitely really? want to thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show and inspiring the audience, inspiring the view viewers. And I wish you nothing but great success in everything that you're doing right now and inspiring and empowering people. And just want to say again, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Shola, you're most welcome. It was my pleasure. Happy to be with you. And we wish you as well uh, successes on your journey as well and success for the show as well. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Well, guys, that was amazing. And I think that what we we actually were running out of time now, but I wanted to just make sure that everyone understood how important it is to be a leader and to use some of those leadership skills uh, in your field. And also something really, really powerful that I wrote down that I don't want to forget. Uh, you also have to make sure that you are able to conquer that doubt. As soon as the doubt comes, we heard it from Garfield, you have to attack it, attack it head on, get it out of here so that you're able to move forward. And so I'm blown away. I wanna go back uh, to revisit some of my uh, goals that I set out to accomplish for this year and kind of spruce it up a little bit and, you know, get 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 it done get it done so we wanted to thank you so much for tuning in for today's show we want to make sure that you follow us on all media platforms uh, we are all social media platforms we want to say a big huge thank you to all of our partners our subscribers our supporters our listeners and our viewers from all over the world we want to thank you for all of the viewers who engage with us and who have been sharing comments and asking questions this is what it's all about it's about empowering everyone, empowering our community and our people to be leaders in the space that they are called to do. So I do want to uh, end with the prayer. And so, God, we just thank you for today. We thank you that you are God and you are sitting on the throne. We thank you for everyone who is listening and viewing and watching this program. We thank you, uh, God, that you have equipped them with what they need 
in order to complete the assignment that you have given them, God. We ask you if there's any doubt that you have it removed. We thank you that you will send people to encourage them and to redirect them and to keep them on task to completing the goal that is set out for them to complete, God. We thank you for traveling mercies. We thank you for safety and we thank you for protection. We thank you for Mr. Garfield. And we ask you that you bless him tremendously in the space that he is in. And we just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I just want to thank you again for tuning in and having, we had an awesome show today. We'll see you next week. Are you ready for the weekend? Weekends on UME Radio. Get the UME Radio app. Weekends on UME Radio. The sun is up and so are we. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook, all at UME Radio. UME Radio. Positive entertainment 24-7. Subscribe on YouTube and click the notification bell. Apostle Faith Live with children reading Bible stories. To be on the show, go to walmo.org forward slash media to apply. Tune in every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. For every child, everywhere. In the positive side to life, when times are bad, focus on your friends who are at your side. When time, when time is good, notice and help out others. How do you feel when your parents tell you don't do something? What do you do? Don't do it. What do you do? Don't do it. No, I'm saying, how do you feel when your parents say don't do something and you do it? How? What do you think? What do you? How do you? What do you do? You become what? Scared. Uh huh. Yes, but you know you what? You're going to get. You're going to get in trouble. You got to talk about. Come on. Come on. I know. It's going. Okay, there we go. Okay, so they heard their father, God is coming, and all of a sudden, everybody tried to hide. Because they know they did something wrong. Yes. Yes, it does. Yes, that's right. That's right. Adam and Eve hid among the trees. They were afraid. They were correct. What have you done, God? Did you eat the fruit from the forbidden tree? Uh, Eve, no, yeah. yes. Adam said yes, but he gave it to me. Now he stopped blaming his wife. He said yes, but the servant didn't eat. It was me. Yes. Did you do what he yes. Said the serpent tricked me. That's God. God told the snake. Because sit over there, sit over there, step step right there, see back in the morning. Okay. God and Jesus. Yeah. No. Because of what you did, you will always crawl on your belly. That's what he told the, the snake. So remember the snake. That tells you the snake had legs, right? The snake had legs. So because of what he did, but remember, Satan got into the snake, right? Okay. Because of what you did, you gonna crawl on your belly for the rest of your life. God made him, God made him. Took away his legs. Yeah, and he yes. made him into a real snake. Yes, he did. Okay. Then he told Adam and Eve, because you disobeyed me, you shall no longer live in this garden. Because you disobeyed me, you will no longer live here. Adam and Eve left the garden God placed angels and a flaming sword, there it is, to guard the entrance. Adam and Eve would not be allowed yes, in the garden again. That's the angel. Yes, Laura. I got a question. Yes. When they had to leave and the snake tricked them, did 
They felt it sad because they couldn't protect the garden anymore. Right, because you see, they disobeyed God. They dis yes, none. Um, did God send the I snake guess. to the darkness? Well, well, the, uh, the, the snake was there. Uh, he and things. He was in the garden. But this, remember, I told you Satan got into the snake. Okay, Satan got into. Because remember, Satan wanted to destroy God's creation. Everything that God did, Satan wanted to do something to mess it up. He want to make sure he does crazy things to just just dis disintegrate it. Make sure it doesn't happen. Or it doesn't go as planned. Yes, London. When when they when the snake was going away, where did he, where his leg? When he did it on his leg and he stuck inside the snake. Uh, when he wanted to do more bad things that God want that God created. Well he just slid it away. Because remember, the enemy, Satan, was in him. So when the damage was done, he disappeared. Okay? He disappeared. Right? I heard. So the end. Okay? Okay. Alright. So what do you what did you think about that story? Okay? What do you think about it? Yes. I think that. But the story was about to not disobey God. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. All right. And, and why do you think Eve listened to the serpent instead of God? What do you, what do you think she listened to the serpent instead of God? Yes. Um, because she was curious of how the food tastes. I love that, Dad. I love I, that response. Yes. And I also think that. She probably wants to taste the food because it probably tastes more good than the That's that's a good point as well. Excellent. Okay. One said curiosity and one said she thought it would taste it better. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Oh, I'm so glad that wow, now pay attention. How did Adam and Eve feel after they ate the fruit? Yes. They felt it scared that God will just stay up from the garden. Yeah, but they, after they ate the fruit, how did that, after they eat a fruit, how does that make you feel? Yes. Um, what it, happened to them? It makes you feel famished because you ate something. And they felt, Good. when they ate that special fruit, remember, that fruit was in the middle of the garden. You were supposed to touch it. Because it's a fruit that's specially made, it says for, it's a tree of good and evil, tree of knowledge. So when they ate that particular fruit, I mean, they ate all the other fruits, everything was fine. When they ate this particular fruit, how do you think they felt? They felt yes. different. Oh, yes. Very different. That's a good response. And Excellent. Yes. And when they felt different, they also found out they were naked. Yes. That's right. They became very aware of their surroundings. They became aware of, of their nakedness. And yes. Different. Yes. Everything felt really? different. Because remember, Satan told them that, you know, you're not going to physically, they thought it was going to physically die. But what happened was they spiritually died. What does that mean? Spiritually died, that means that your soul now is, because you disobeyed God, so you are now in sin. At that time, everything was good. So this is when sin came into the world because of Adam and Eve's disobedience. So disobedience was the first sin. Okay? So when you disobey a, 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 a direction, disobey when you're told to do something, okay? And you fixed it? Yes. Huh? Can you fix the sin? Yes, you can. And who fixed it? Who fixed it? Jesus. Yes! Who did God say? Jesus. Say now. Jesus. Yeah, Jesus came and fixed the sin. But Jesus came and redeemed us from our sin. Yes. But says but selfish people killed him. Yeah, well, he came back to life though. Came back to life. 
Because God made Jesus. Yes. Okay. Over. So remember, Jesus was there when the earth was when the earth was formed. Remember, I told you Jesus was there. Remember, I told you that. Okay. All right. So, and what was their reaction when they heard that uh, God was walking through the garden? What was the reaction? Their reaction was scared. That's right. Very good. Excellent. Why were they having those feelings? Because they 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 were they were scared of what 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 will happen to them. They because they dis they disobey God. Disobey God. Very good. Oh, you paid attention. Okay. What was the consequences of disobeying disobey God's direction? What was the consequences? To not eat the fruit. No. But what was the consequence? What happened? What did God do after they ate? He was he was banned from. They were banned from, um, from the garden. Yes, they were kicked out of the garden. Now you ain't gonna stay here no more. But you, you're not paying attention. Now you're gonna follow my rules. God has you in the protective garden. Yes. See, now you you was in a beautiful place. You had everything to your comfort. It was normal. Yes, you had all the fun. You had you had everything you could have. I gave you dominion over. All the plants, the animals, everything. And I just tell you, don't eat one thing. Just leave this one tree alone. You let this some serpent tell you to disobey me. I would have left it alone. Ah. I thought. Yes. If, if God said do not touch that, he probably meant do not touch it because it probably wasn't right yet. Because the devil probably did did the same thing and magically put the power Magical. Um, and put God in too. Okay. Okay, well, you got a good point. Yes. Why I wouldn't touch why I wouldn't touch the um the fruit is because then I then um disobedience would have been a real sin and then everybody would have to listen to everything. Yes. They would have been told. Yes. Because we had a good life, we would have had a good life had not had not Adam did what he did. We would have had a really good life. We wouldn't have all these issues that we have out here. People doing all these violence. People doing mean things. People not being nice to one another. When you go to school, you got sometimes children bully one another. Are those things good? No. no. We wouldn't have none of those things. Yes. And also the devil is well, he has he has this little info in the place. Yeah. You can't see God either, but he got a little info. But God is everywhere. You can feel God. And how how do we okay? Jesus came to redeem the world. So then uh John 3 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him should not perish, but has the last in life. So that means that we are in sin. So when Jesus came. And he was crucified, and he died, and he rose again. Okay, okay. And because of his resurrection, we have that power. We have that right to surrender our lives to the Lord, because we're all born in sin. So, for us to change, we accept Jesus in our hearts. Everybody accept Jesus in their hearts today? Yeah. Everybody accept Jesus? Where is crucified me? But he was on the cross. Okay, and they, and they put nails in his hands. They put a thorn on his head, and they nailed his feet together. Yes, that was very, that was very mean. That was very treacherous. And then, okay. And then he became a god. And but he was, he was all part of it. But he could have, he could have uh, brought, summoned ten thousand angels to take him off the cross. He could have done that, but he didn't because he came. Uh, to fulfill the promise that he made to his father. He came for a purpose. So he had to undo what Satan did. So he had to give us a reason to live, a reason for us that when we die, we have another place to go. We go into eternity. We can go to... I have a question. Yes. Is it is it true that if we die, does God reborn, reborn us? Well, if you uh, if you die and you you have accepted Jesus Christ in your heart and you die uh, as a believer, then you are promised to go to where Jesus is, and that's in heaven. 
But if you die, you did not accept Jesus in your heart, and you've been living your life sinful, then where do you think you're going to go? You're going to go where the devil is, and that's hell. And remember, hell was not made for us. It was made for the for, for the enemy and his angels. Okay, it wasn't made for us, but some people don't want to follow the order of God. Some people don't want to, uh, come on, come on, Luke. Some people don't want to follow direction. They don't want to surrender their lives to the Lord. And because of that, they end up being lost. Okay, so the beautiful thing is, come on, Luke. Okay, the beautiful thing is, learn to be obedient. Follow through when your parents tell you to do something. Okay. Because when you don't do right, there are always consequences. Okay, so I want you to um, draw something, what you remember about the story. All right? Give it a few minutes. Okay, you want to paper? Here you go. You want to give them up? You didn't have crayons, so you have, um, you have markers. Okay, now I want you to give them out first. Give them out. Okay. All right. You can use marker if you want to use crown. Okay, you got three more minutes. Go ahead. I want a blue pen. That's a blue one. Okay. Okay. So I want you to, you can do it right here. Can we see that? Hey, let me get that black one because you can't see that one. You want a green one? So you can see better. Okay, put it right here. Can I get a Okay. And can you give uh, Boom some crayons, please? Give him some. He likes to have markers. Give him a marker. Hey, the, the part where you enjoy about the story? Right about that part. What did you, uh, part of the story you enjoy the most? Your favorite part of the story? Okay, you want to have a problem Thank you. So you know you want. <laughs> okay. And we put the brown marker on here. That's the same. We masked this way. Okay. Okay, very good. Now, Ima, that's excellent. You want to use the markers? Are you doing the markers as well as the kernel? Or are you doing both? Okay, all right. Now, see ya. What are you, you drawing? Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. Come on. You only, only take one at a time. Do you open them all up? Yeah. on the floor. You have the, you know, I don't want to go right at the markers. Okay. Don't open them up. Don't open them up. You, you don't want to use one at a time. Okay. You want to use this one? So let's cover this one. Right now. Okay. You want to use two. Okay. Make sure you keep them covered. What are you drawing, Blue? I'm drawing a big dinosaur. Okay, yeah, you so gotta connect to the story. Connect to the story. They're dinosaur in the story? Yeah, no, they're all dinosaur in the story. Draw something that's in the story. I'm dinosaur. You may not make it on dinosaur. What dinosaur is in the story? Tell me. A T Rex. A T Rex in the, in the story? There's no T Rex in the story. The only animal that was in there was a snake. Yeah, I thought, yeah, so we read in this particular story, yes. So there was no, yeah, but there was no dinosaur in there. <laughs> it was easy. I already pictured everything. I'm sorry. It's that It's that And the No, no, no. See, you are. I'm not going to let you use markers anymore, Blue, because you're not. You I am using it. Okay, but you're not. You, you're drawing it out. No, I want to draw. Okay, all right. This is what I need. 
Okay, so wait, wait a second, we didn't get a chance yet. Okay, so now are you ready? No, I'm ready. Um, okay. Uh, I just found the cover to that. Do you have it? Okay, there you go. So I'll give you one more minute. Oh, wait. Yeah. I forgot to put it in the inside. Yes, very good. Yes. Very good. I got inside. You're doing pretty good. Very good. Now, Eva, this is what you're doing over there. All right. Wow. Uh -huh. You need five more minutes. Okay, let me get two more minutes. Okay, you finish? Okay. All right. Now, Blue. Blue wants to go first. So, what did you draw, Blue? I drew a big dinosaur. Oh, wow. So, dinosaur was in the story? Yeah. What was the dinosaur in the story? Did we see any dinosaurs in the story? No. Okay, so where did you get the dinosaur in the story? Blue. Ah, uh, you saw the dinosaur in the trees. Okay, thank you so much, sir. I saw it hiding. You saw it hiding? Okay, you saw a dinosaur hiding in the tree. Is that what you say? Okay, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right. Let it shine, let it shine. 
I just want to remind you that Jesus loves you. And now for today's spotlight. Yumi Radio was originally founded in 2009. Back then, it was called Advanced Media Production. After winning first place in the Jamaica Broilers Fair Play Awards, the company seized operations around 2012. In December 2018 the company was rebranded and brought back into operations with new ownership and in February 2019 it launched its first radio station Yumi Radio under the call sign WUME DD New York Yumi Radio is a digital radio station owned and operated by UME Digital Media Inc a digital studio and multimedia company headquartered in Bronx New York Our brands are committed to inspiring educating and entertaining people through transformative and empowering content. Our mission is to reach 1 million households, touch 1 million lives, and showcase 1 million brands. Get the Yumi Radio app for the full experience, available via your Apple and Google Play stores. If you want to listen on the web, you may go to app.yumiradio.com or via our website at www.umeradio.com. Our content can be watched on Vision. You can also listen in via Amazon Music, 
iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Google Podcast, Podbean, TuneU, Live 365, Spotify Stitcher Player FM Listen Notes. For all business inquiries, contact us at info at yumiradio.com. This station is 100% community funded. To support us, please visit yumiradio.com forward slash get involved. Subscribe on YouTube, Instagram, and everywhere online at UME Radio. Thank you for supporting us. UME Radio, positive entertainment 24-7. Good morning, 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 everyone, and welcome to our ever-evolving show as we aim to become the change, the solution, the advocate for empowerment in our community. We make the necessary changes to that end. So as I explore the kind of impact I want to have, I realize that a change of title was necessary. So I want to introduce you all to the light within. This show is where we highlight stories of hope within the community. We interview community leaders, charitable organizations, and other service pr providers who provide solutions to inspire hope and bring solutions to the Black community. Hi, all listeners, all viewers. Again, welcome to The Light Within. Now, empowering children is very important. As Whitney Houston shared in her song, the children are the future. And we just heard from them in, um, excuse me, sorry about that. We just heard from them with Apostle Dr. Faith Walters. And Apostle Dr. Faith Walters is truly a valuable instrument of change in her community. She has so much that she offers for the benefit of others, not herself, everyone, not herself will be working closely with her ministry as a support system and sharing her story for you to learn how you can support her or how her initiative started and how you can start your own initiative. For over two decades, Dr. Walters has been actively engaged in her community and this year started out with a bang. On January 11th, she went out with care packages for her community members as she does once every month and here she is putting the packages together let's take a look every day is a new beginning meet jesse your community health advocate the light within tune in every saturday Dr. Faith Walters and my support person here, Sister Marilyn uh, Happen, who has been helping me to put these uh, packages together for the community. And she helped me on a monthly basis. Apostle Dr. Faith Walters received the call from the Lord to begin a ministry that would empower individuals for success in the kingdom of God. Women and Men of Excellence Outreach Ministries is located in Mount Vernon, New York and online at wamo.org. For over two decades, this ministry has been instrumental in helping the community overcome its challenges. And this year, the movement continued. And I'm so grateful to God that she's here right now. So we are putting a package together. We're taking things out of packages, putting them together in baskets so as to set up um, what we're going to do to put together the things for the community. Really appreciate Dr. Faith Walters to have me 
as um, her assistant in getting her bag, community bags together for, you know, um, our community. And when she goes out to give it out, they always look forward to see her coming out. It's a monthly thing she does and she really likes it. I love and it. I, and I, I love coming to help her. You yes. know, yes. always, even in my busy schedule, yes. Yes. I come out and I support her. On January 11th, the first outreach drive was executed and was a massive success. We are here one more time in the new year. Uh, I must say before I go on, Happy New Year to everyone once again. So I'm just excited about what God is doing for this new year. I, I'm excited about what he's done already and what he's about to do for, for you and you and for, for basically all of us. And we just thank God we're here uh, one more time. And we did the final piece to our community outreach drive. Um, we completed a package and we, we will be giving out these packages on tomorrow, Tuesday, January 11th, 2022 at 34-56 East 3rd Street in Mount Vernon, New York. The times are from 2 p.m. till 3.30 until supplies, supplies last. So I am praying that uh, people will come as quickly as possible, you know, because it's going to be kind of cold, you know, but as, as God continues to lead, we continue to bless the community, especially in this time where so many families are in need of support in some way, shape or form. So if God put on your heart to bless families or bless a, a, a neighbor, you know, whatever it is, just allow the Lord to lead you. So we are just thankful that we can do this on a monthly basis. And we pray that, you know, that you allow the Lord to move on your heart uh, to be a monthly uh, a person to, to send donations uh, to the ministry to help in this process, in, in this cause. And, you know, because helping our community is such a powerful thing. And, you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're doing it once a month, twice a month, it's fine as long as you're doing something, you know. So that's a powerful thing. So we're just grateful to the Lord today that uh, we were able to do this. So you could go to our website at wamoe.org. And I would love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're looking for as many subscribers as possible. And when you go to YouTube, put in Wamu Ministries at gmail.com and you will you will see the um, you see me in the red sir, uh, red outfit and you just press that subscribe button and we thank you in advance. Here is a list of upcoming outreach drives by this ministry. Tuesday, February 8th. Tuesday, March 8th. Tuesday, April 12th. This is a monthly initiative, funded by Women and Men of Excellence Outreach Ministries. Here is how you can help. Visit www.wamo.org forward slash give, where you can give a one-time donation, or a monthly donation. Let's go. Uh, this is Apostle Faith. I'm on uh, Prospect Avenue in Mount Vernon. I just finished up 34 East. 54, uh, 54, uh, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, 54, which is okay. really helpful and yes. needy around these times. Yes. I'm glad she was here. I bypassed, I came back, and this smile has been on my face. God bless this woman and anything she has done. Praise God. Thank you so much. Amen. Okay, and you just enjoy your day and have a happy new year. Likewise. Okay. Bye-bye. Your donations will help to ensure that this initiative expands to reach even more people in need. Oh, 
All right, everyone, and that was our clip of Apostle Dr. Faith Walters, her first outreach of 2022, okay? This is not her first outreach ever, but it's the first outreach of this year, 2022. And let me tell you a little bit more about Dr. Apostle Faith Walters. Not only is she a powerful woman, but she is also a therapist, pastor, author, and community leader. It is through her ministry, she has been faithfully gifting packages to community members in the city of Mount Vernon on a monthly basis. That is the second Tuesday of every month. Now let's take a look at her outreach team preparing for Jesus is Love Community Outreach Drive that was held on February 8th on, how times I for Valentine's Day. I'm telling you, I love the thought that goes into the initiative. No pun intended. Let's take a look. How are you? This is Apostle Faith Walters and my assistant, Marilyn Tappen. We are coming to you from Women and Men of Excellence Outreach Ministries located in Mount Vernon, New York. We have another month of our community outreach drive and of course this month is february, february yeah. oh it's a love month all yeah. right so february you know 14. it represents love and we also go out to add the food package this month because it's valentine's everybody get a rose right oh, in their packages the love is in the air yes yes and yeah. we know jesus is love right so love. this is what we we're about today and we're gonna be giving out some. They're gonna get some tea, some uh, of course candy, something sweet, yeah. and they're gonna get some coffee. All right, some coffee. They got some soup. Coffee. Oh wow! Wow. Yes, and uh, some, crackers. some um, crackers and um, oatmeal, macaroni and, and macaroni and cheese. Yes. Wow. Look at yes. that. So they're gonna have a feast. Yes, they are. And then we have our tracks. We have our track, and we also have our flyer. A track. And also, I give them a daily word, something that's um, positive. And it reads, uh, I am bold, powerful, and strong. I have the mind of God. I am walking in kingdom consciousness. Whatever I put my mind to, I can do it. I will have faith, believe, and I will achieve. So this is what they get uh, in every package along with the flyer. You know, and it's uh, a lot of messages, a lot of things on there, a lot of wording to help them, to encourage them, because everybody needs encouragement. And these uh, uh, packages, they go a long way. They could travel anywhere because, you know, I have no, God has no respect of persons, neither am I. So if God said to give, I give, it doesn't matter. So I just let the Lord use me and it's been a blessing and I, we're going to continue doing it. Okay. And we're just ready to put our packages together. So let's start. Let's see that. Let's put our soup in here. Uh, all right, go on. Put the soup. Get the crackers. The crackers make the soup thin up. Okay. You got your macaroni and cheese. Yes, yes, yes. And I have some, let me put in there. Uh, yeah. We're going to have the coffee. Oatmeal. I'm going to put some oatmeal here. And we're going to have the tea. Yes, we get some tea. Okay. Some candy. I'm a tea drinker candy, myself. So I like that. Yes, of course. And uh, what else you have there? Uh, you have the macaroni. Yo, can you have the crackers? Yes. Okay, and put a rose. And then I'll put, put the rose. Lovely rose. rose. Uh -huh. Put the track in. And we got our little message going yeah. in. Mm -hmm. Somebody get the lotion. Oh, okay. That's what they got a lotion from the last time. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, yes. that's our skin, guys. Oh, one more coffee. Yeah. One more sweet. Mm -hmm. All right. We just keep it going. Okay. So we got this bag going. Here's a bag. Here's a bag. So you're going to tie it up, put it over here. Yes. All right. So we're going to put a rose in that. Yes. All right. Yes. Rose in that. And I'm just going to get the rose. Wale. 
They this one is tomato basil soup. Yes. 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 All right, so while we are oh finishing up packaging, I want to share with you a quick little info more about Apostle Faith Walters and her ministry. I want to share with you. Wow, chicken and wild I want to share too. with you oh, wow. some of the yes, solutions that she began to try. Can you take a look? Yes, yes, yes. Look at that. Rose and candy and cookie. And then candy as well. There you go. Put some over there. Put some right. Yes. Look at them getting it all together. So while they're doing it, can we take a quick look? of Apostle Dr. Faith Walters, her four pillars. I love to share with you all what she is all about. Now, these are her four pillars of empowerment for success in the kingdom. The first one deals with ministry. Uh, uh, most of herbal tea. Here, and we all tea know tea that have, ministry um, is so important the in the community. I mean, orange tea. Wow. So, yes, they're getting feast. I mean, it is yes, absolutely yes. powerful, and I really I love to be welcomed in you ministry and surround myself with powerful people and Lord. powerful women like Dr. Apostle Faith Walters. Let's Lord. get back to the video to see what is up next, and we'll go into the second one later on. Coffee, coffee. Yes. Okay. Of course, don't forget the rose. Because they got to feel special. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God, so wonderful. Oh, my goodness. All the time. Yes. Great. All right, so we have some real quick. I want to read some amazing. comments yes, if That's I can awesome. read some of that. So, so we have entrepreneurs allowed saying, Wow, where did they say she was, she was again? So she is awesome. in Mount Vernon, New York. Again, that is Mount Vernon, New York City. That is where she holds her. Excuse me. Yes, that is where she holds her outreach drive. Now let me tell you while they're packaging it that up a little bit more in detail of her ministry. So her ministry has been going on since June of 2006. And this ministry has been offering Bible education, prayer, fellowship, and worship. And there are church without borders, a church that is for everyone. And as you see here, she has an awesome online platform. And if you want to get connected with her, all you have to do is go to wamo.org. That's W-A-M-O-E.org. And you will be connected to her ministries and all that she has to offer. All right, and now while we're going on, we're gonna talk about her second pillar. Her second pillar is what we're seeing displayed on today, her outreach. For over 18 years, this ministry has been giving back to the community through its monthly community drives in Mount Vernon, New York. How many of you have a local leader in your community that gives back, that does outreaches? that helps the community, that helps the homeless, that helps people for whatever they may need. Do you have an Apostle Faith Walters in your community? Are you looking for one? Are you looking to be the Apostle Faith Walters in your community? If you're inspired by this while we're watching, go ahead and donate to wamo.org. That is W-A-M-O-E dot org slash give or slash donate. I love seeing this. This is absolutely amazing. And now, I think they're almost wrapping up with their little packages here. We're going to go into the third pillar that she has for success in the kingdom. And that is empowerment. She is known to empower for her stories, for her experience. She not only 
preaches, but she also has self-development resources and guides and books. Her book, Reborn, and her book, Self-Esteem, a book of poetry that is truly inspiring and motivational. It shows you the life that she went through and how she was able to overcome those struggles and through that be able to minister and connect with the people in her community. Wild side note, are you a coffee or tea drinker? I'm, I'm a tea, I'm a tea drinker. And for you all to know the book, right, there's two books. I want to spe specify that. Two books. The first book is called Reborn. The second book is called Poems About My Self-Esteem. You can get your copy today right at wamo.org slash resources. Again, that's W-A-M-O-E dot org slash resources. We have some comments from Satin Brownie that says, this is very special. As someone who grew up on kindness, this means so much to those who are in need. She also says, Wow, I hope we appreciate and value these people and what they do. Yes, absolutely, it's absolutely necessary. So we went through three pillars so far. We went through her ministry, we went through her outreach, we went through her empowerment, and her last pillar is community. And this is done through its media network. This ministry reaches millions of people in over 116 countries. How many of you know someone that has a ministry like this? Do you have a ministry like this? Are you looking to partner with someone like Dr. Faith or Dr. Faith herself? If you want to do that, go ahead, write on, and get connected with UME Radio. And Email us at info at umeradio.com and we will love to connect you with her. And we also have some of her resources that I want to share with you. Her self-development resources because we know that in today's age, we are struggling to develop ourselves. We are searching from this thing to that thing to what's on TV to what this person is doing to develop ourselves we don't have the resources we don't have the right people the right influences around us and some people may go down the wayside apostle faith walters is passionate about personal development and helping you achieve your self-development goals whatever that may be she is a published author singer songwriter and she writes to transform lives through self-love and serving god again you can connect with us and connect with me and this show at info at ume radio.com we are here for this purpose what you are seeing mission purpose community drives charitable organizations, people who, even if they may not have a charity, but they have some type of service for the community, whether that be in health and wellness, whether that may be in development, whether that may be coaching, whether that be going through, uh, through grief, whatever that may be, some service for the community, because we know that, especially in the Black community, we have all these resources, but it's hard to find them. It's hard to get connected. It's hard to be plugged into them. You know, they're all this all about. Come to UME Radio and we will share and grow with you. We have Keith that says, uh, he says, Keith Merritt says, this is an example of someone who not only hears the word, but someone who believes in practicing it. Yes. Yes. And we need that key. Thank you for that. Because a lot of people don't, they read the Bible, they may go to church on Sunday for a couple hours, read the Bible here and there, but throughout the week, they're acting some type of way. Look at that real complete package. Let's see. We got the rose and everything. Put a tie around. Put a ribbon. Actually, put a red ribbon. <laughs> yes, but they act in some type of way. We don't have leaders that preach. You know, they may preach one thing and do another. Where are your words? Where are your words and actions lining up? Are they lining up? That's a question. 
That's a question. We have entrepreneurs allowed saying, man, I need to do more. Where, how do I start? Where do I start? Entrepreneurs out. If you or anyone that you know are looking for a community, are looking to get connected, if you want to donate to Apostle Faith Walters and her ministry, if you have any questions, go to wamo.org slash outreach. That is W-A-M-O-E dot org slash outreach. Or you can email them at support at w-a-m-o-e dot org that is support at wamo dot org now if you want to be part of the vision and you want to grow your own business you want us you see the vision that we have and you want us to be involved in your community remember this is this is in mount Vernon, new york you could be in florida you could be in california you could be in england for all we know we just want powerful leaders in the community email us at info at umeradio.com we have go inspire jamaica foundation says she does it with some such a passion though such thoughtfulness carefulness a rose valentine wow yes isn't that beautiful isn't that beautiful package so we got soup we have um crackers macaroni and cheese tea coffee uh and of course a red rose is represents nice. valentine's day it represents love Nice. Can we go to our right. clip? So we God have bless a short everyone clip and we pray of one that, of the beneficiaries. You know, what does God blow your heart to do? Just allow the Lord to use you, you know, in whatever way possible, you know, whatever it is, you know, because God loves people who are cheerful and giving, you know, so important because as you remember Jesus' example, he was a giver. He constantly gave all the time. So, you know, it's just a powerful thing you know, to continue to bless others. And uh, this is Apostle Faith Walters from Women, Men of Excellence Outreach Ministries. And this is my assistant, um, Marilyn, Marilyn Tappen. And we're just so thankful uh, to be here on today to share with the people on, on our community, our monthly community outreach oh, drive. Great. So if you want to see more about our ministry, learn more about our ministry, you go to wamoe dot org at our website, and you get to see a lot of more information about what we do. We have services on Wednesdays at two p.m. and Sundays at five p.m. on YouTube, also on Facebook and other social media networks. So we are thankful that you join in, and we also have our children show. Yes, yes, on, on Saturday, Saturday mornings. Morning. Uh, Apostle Faith Live, reading Bible stories to children. So I'm grateful to be here and I'm so happy, you know, to continue doing uh, the work of Jesus Christ and continue the flowing what he has us to do. Yes, yeah, so now we will love to share with you a little short clip of one of her beneficiaries. Thank God to be here and again, giving out uh, uh, my uh, community outreach drive and it's a little bit cold out here but I'm here thank you God and uh, this is Valentine's month so I am giving out the packages with a rose so I'm out here in the community and again it's a privilege and it's cold but only what you do for Christ will last so God bless you and I should be out of this cold asking God to make it quick. All right, God bless. Talk soon. Okay. And hey, what's your name? My name is Jessica. All right, nice to uh, met. No, Jessica no. is here, and Jessica, we just gave Jessica a package, and yeah. Jessica's going to say a few words. I really appreciate this. Uh, thank you so much. It's probably going to be my only Valentine's Day gift, so I appreciate you, and I want you to have a blessed and warm day. All right, thank you. Oh, all right. Wasn't that sweet? Oh, look at Jessica. And I love how she, this is just one person, one person out of the many that she supports and helps. Wasn't that awesome? Now, if you've been inspired to take action, here's how you can support this initiative. Sign up to volunteer or give a tax deductible donation. 
visit again wamo.org slash outreach that's w-a-m-o-e dot org slash outreach or send an email to support at wamo.org. Now, if you or anyone you know has been inspired and is an inspiration in their community, remember it can be big or small, it doesn't matter. We want to help to celebrate their work so that others can be inspired to support them. We love to be a part of your vision. Now, if you want that, Email us at info at umeradio.com. Remember to be the light within your community. Stay connected and follow us on all social media platforms at UME Radio. Give a like, comment, share. Don't forget to click that subscribe button so you'll be notified when we go live. Again, be the light inside you. Thanks for watching. Are you ready for the weekend? Weekends on UME Radio. Get the UME Radio app. Weekends on UME Radio. The sun is up and so are we. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook, all at UME Radio. UME Radio. Positive entertainment 24-7. Subscribe on YouTube and click the notification bell. International.